Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Six Invitational 2020. And yeah, hindsight for many teams is 2020 on the tournament here today. We're on playoffs day number one out of the five. Two are in our current group stage arena. And then the three starting Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be at the Bell Center here in Laval, Montreal, Canada. Almost there. But we still have a few teams to go. Eight entered from the group stage. Six will make it out to the main stage for the six matches that will be there with our lower bracket actual double elimination here at six invitational bds has fallen to dark zero but they're not done yet they'll be fighting tomorrow for their chances to make it to the main stage now though for second matchup of the day it's nip versus tsm two massive hard hitters from latin america and na let's start off with team number one though and take a look at nip here's how who they are of course julio pino psycho muzi and kamikaze now alex we were talking about this even last night it seems like the roles are reversed at NIP online compared to LAN. Shed some light on it. I mean, we do got to remember that last LAN, it was a little bit difficult for us to exactly. judge because they simply didn't have their entire roster. But Julio is, you know, you were explaining how long he's been playing competitive for, how many lands he's been into. It's it's insane. He's Was it six years you mentioned? He's been playing pretty much since uh, early 2014, yeah. even a bit before that. So the man has been to many a lands internationally and in Brazil. And we've seen kind of Muzi and, and Julio, you know, swapping up a little bit on who's performing here c compared to who's performing in Pro League. Mm -hmm. It's a different lineup. Again, Japan, two players couldn't yeah. make it. Unfortunately, visas are complicated. Let me tell you that from my own personal experience. And well, in the end, they had to bring in two substitutes from Spain, from the Spanish nationals, come in and play. They played fantastically given the situation. They literally came off the plane two hours before the game. It's pretty impressive. Reciprocity, unfortunately, really had a, had a tough game somehow that happened there. But that's NIP. They have a lot here on offer, and we're going to dig through that a bit later. Though their opponents, TSM, this squad has been ravaging through North America in Pro League. And yeah, they are so scary that their photos don't even show up on the screen. I, I, I like that. Just not enough numbers in, in any PC to put them on there. You know what? They did input the numbers into the Excel sheet and everything. Just couldn't calculate. And in the end, we're, we're like left with this. Bolo? When does he play? Uh, we don't know. We even, don't know. See, even the computers can't not handle it. And one player that distinctly just is so talented and we keep seeing him playing so effectively is Gio in my mind. Gio has been so good of a player no matter which team he's been on. And here, he's really been showing up with the squad. You'll see it. But Bolo, you're, everybody's asking, when does he play? Well, it's right now. Gio achieved Merc and Pojo Man. The squad has it all. I think Reaper described it in the perfect way in his video a week or so ago. TSM are never not doing something during the round. There's always someone on some drone, always moving somewhere in the map, taking control. And this is something that they excel at. And it's a bit difficult for us to kind of has it select players that stand out because I think they all do it in their own way, right? Absolutely. I mean, we talk about Merc, and I'm actually looking at his rating now, and uh, I'm very shocked that it's not a positive rating given how well he plays as a whole. So that just goes to show how many of his other teammates are also putting in the work. Yeah, and we also aren't comparing the same amount of maps, right, between mm. NIP and TSM. So that, that does go a little bit uh -huh. in, in Nip's way, because Nip lost one map, Cafe, if I remember correctly. TSM lost three maps, and they also lost uh, Cafe. So you, you're that's correct. automatically going to have a little bit worse rating on on more losses. That's, that's almost to be expected. So in the end, you'll see people mostly breaking even on both of these sides. But NIP, because they were able to make it out without having to fall back on the second matchup in the loser's bracket of their group in Group C, then it kind of gives them that extra bonus. So they're definitely ready for it. TSM had a bit of a tougher time, but again, it's SSG that was in, the, in that group, and they really were fighting pretty darn hard. It's a big North American clash. That said, I think we all want to see these players clashing head-to-head, -head, and we have a great video to describe what's going to happen here between NIP and TSM, straight from the teams. My name is Julio, my nickname is Julio as well, and I'm from Nidia Ni Pajamas, support player. Hi, I'm Pojo Man, I play for TSM, and I'm their support player. Okay, it was an intense game. We, yeah, it, it's, we, when we play MIBR, it's always good matches, in Pro League or online or offline. And we, we counter-thread them. 
a lot and we were expecting some stress for them like because it's hard to change a lot of things one day to another you know less less day to today so like i think learn like this you know uh we played navi uh went pretty well it was pretty close maps but i felt like we were in control the whole time so i think the most difficult thing was the, the map itself consulate on attack like we were struggling a lot a lot ourselves like we were not doing our things and they were like slowing us slowing us down so it was pretty hard some some hounds but like we made it in the playoffs we practiced a lot like we did boot camp did a lot of things and i think everything went better than expected expected yeah so we're pretty excited to be one step closer to making the stage uh start preparing for all the other teams hopefully i we're kind of glad that we got seed two so I think we can match up a lot pretty well to the seed one team. So we now want to face a not Brazilian team. We face two Brazilian teams, so now we're gonna really play the tournament. Not the, they are bad, but like we're gonna really play international tournament, and we are happy about it. And that's it. Yet another international performance for both of these teams. NIP specifically has been out for blood for quite a while and Japan was supposed to be their Hail Mary but unfortunately couldn't bring it there here at Invitational. They went through their groups looking pretty darn sweet. We have our map veto so let's go through those and then we'll be done to start with our matchup. Remember it's a seven map pool as both teams are huddling in. TSM are ready for the game and they'll be the first to ban here. It's ban ban pick pick ban ban and the cider is the seventh map left. We down with border coastline is map two. Consulate will be our first pick so there we go we already see it a second time. What will be our second pick? That is up to NIP Cafe Dostoevsky. Okay we're heating up. I love the map. I think everybody does here. Two bands. Villa What's left for last two maps are we gonna see? Bank, yes! Okay, so Clubhouse is out. A map that a lot of Latin American teams kind of mess up on every now and then. Thatcher gets banned pretty consistently on it. It causes a lot of mayhem. Be left for Bank. A map that TSM are pretty darn comfortable on. So I, I don't know about that decision in the end. Let's let's break it through. Let's talk first of all about the oddities in the map bands if you see any. Well, I mean, we can look at the, the, the simple ones, right? Border, TSM always bans that, so that helps. Uh, bank, uh, TSM is not going to have anything on uh, on NIP on that map, at least not from, from before the event. So unless they look further back, it's going to be a little difficult. There's not a lot they can learn from uh, from when we were in Japan either. Mm -hmm. uh, Stat-wise, it seems to favor TSM in the in the veto, but you never know, you know, are you, are you keeping maps for this event? Is that it? Or did someone win a man phase? Look, I'm really concerned by the first ban there. I'm a little bit concerned that TSM is now going to have the upper hand by having Consulate in their map pool, and they banned Coastline. Unfortunately, with that Coastline ban, they've let Consulate under the radar, which is not a very good map for NIP. It's a great map for TSM. And then I'm not, I'm unsure about the Coastline ban because statistically, both teams don't really do that well at it. So. What is it about the coastline that they felt they needed it to be their first ban and they let Consulate, which is not their strong map, go through? That's a big question to answer there. But, but first, let's compare a player from each one of these teams, Julio and Merc. Julio in the video was saying, I'm more of a support role, yet he ends up doing so, so much for his team. I think a complete opposite of that coin would be Merc for TSM with those opening kills the man is always on fire and there's always someone behind him giving him the info to shine how do we compare these two types of plays and two players in completely different roles Alex well, I mean on the left you have you know the the this iron hot guy who's played every esport event so far and then on the right side you got Merc with you know the young blood coming in with me like immense mechanical skill if we look at Merc achieved in Geo like you just need one of them to pop off, and then it's then it's scary to play against them. If two do, oh, then it's there's not a lot of strats that can save you from that. Unfortunately, like what do you expect in terms of like hmm, a clash of play styles? Because in game number one, Dark Zero BDS, you're saying, okay, well, Dark Zero very regimented. They're very good at you know sectioning parts off of the map, as you like to say it, just yourself. And then BDS, the more active and proactive style of play very different in this case. What do you, how do you think this is going to clash on this one? Look, I'm actually excited for Nip here. I think their playstyle will do well against a playstyle like TSM. 
uh, I think TSM, you said, mechanically gifted beyond the gods out of every team that I've sort of been able to watch here. I think I'm excited for this team to see their mechanical giftedness. But if they pair it with utility usage and great strategies, it's terrifying. So I think Nip's the great kind of counter for a team like this. Hmm. And if, I mean, you can say if there is any time Nip wants to prove themselves, I know that makes sense no matter what you're fighting in a competition. But, you know, you want to get back from last time. Exactly. Well, Consulate Bands, what do you guys expect? Alex, what do you see, especially after the game we saw earlier, BDS Dark Zero? I would just target Jiro or Merc, like directly. Get a little bit of space in there. It allow allow Nip some, some freedom and to, to bring something that they might not be able to plan for. Huh. That's very cryptic. Oh. Ooh. Eyebrows I mean, here and there. We've seen some interesting bands from them in the very, past. So. Very true. Jess? I'm a little bit worried about the consulate, as I said. Um, letting that slide through, I think, could be a really critical error for them. If I'm wrong, I'll be happy to be wrong. Uh, but if I'm right, oh, it's not good. Yeah, I guess uh, we're leaning more towards TSM between both of you. So we'll see how it ends in this matchup. Though, map number one, consulate between TSM and NIP right now, starting Kicks and Tarot. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Milos. This is going to be an exciting one. I have no idea what's going to happen between these two teams. They've never met their styles match up. You've got the Bolo versus the Brazilian Bolo and Muzi. So what's going to happen? Who's going to be able to win? A lot of intense mechanical skills was touched on by the analysts. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that we're going to have a rip roar and start here on console. Yeah, I absolutely agree with the analysts on a lot of things here, especially the most notably that these teams match up in play style. That's the really interesting thing. Both squads play a more conventional sort of siege in that they rely strongly on being able to win their 1v1s, 2v1s, going in for team fights and actually coming out on top and just outpowering your opponent. So when you've got two teams sharing mentality like that, I think it's going to make it really interesting when they go head to head. We're probably going to have a very fast paced match or we will have one of these teams get a little bit scared. And whichever one that is, whichever one strays away from their typical playstyle first, they will likely lose in the long run. Ban face coming out here. Nomad and Dokubi banned out first. We'll probably see more common defensive bams. Might see a Mira slip through here because it is consulate. You don't have to ban them, and that's actually not conventional. It has been done on consulate in the past. The mute ban, very interesting from TSM. That's going to make droning considerably easier. Echo will be the other ban. So Maestro's still in play. He'll be very useful on this map. Ma uh, Mira is still in play. She can be used here. She can be useful. And especially for the Latin American region, I think we see them use Mira more frequently on concept than some other regions. So there is some potential here for Nip to use that in their defensive rounds. For now, though, Nip are going to be starting on defense, starting bottom floor. We'll see TSM beginning on attack. I'm very curious to see how that mute ban unfolds. Largely just because we know that mute is a very commonly played operator, of course, on this map. Yeah. He's a very commonly played operator in, in all the metas right now on most of the maps just because of how well he works for Breach Denial, how well he works for Intel Denial, how he can assist anchors, he can assist aggressive offsite play, he can assist roamers, etc. There's so much flexibility that you get out of a single mute being available. And not to mention the fact Defenders that, you know, he got the SMG 11 a, a couple seasons back, back and his pick rate soared because now he had the kit to be able to play very similarly to a smoke. So yeah. he can do the soft destruction while still being able to play close angles and semi-long range range with a nitro cell. He's really kitted very, very strongly. One of the really interesting things about the SAS operators on defense, uh, the smoke and the mute, the thing that makes them, I think in my opinion, the most useful for a team is not necessarily their potency in the gunfights because, yeah, you've got that shotgun, which is widely considered to be the best shotgun on defense. Um, and then you've got the SMG-11 as a secondary, which basically is another primary weapon. So yeah, you've got a really well-rounded kit. But the main thing is that you can use them as deterrent operators. So if there's somewhere you really don't want the enemy to push, and it can be held at close range, that's where those SOS, or SAS rather defenders excel. It's because people just don't want to push into that shotgun. They don't want to push into that SMG-11, and they'll try and find other ways to address that problem. And it's like uh, putting a rock in the middle of a river. Now, TSM trying to push into admin office. I don't know if they're aware of Psycho's aggression here. It doesn't seem so. No drones from TSM so far in the admin office. Sheev will be starting it out, actually coming from Soda. He'll spot the dock of Psycho. 
And there's a player at the top of Visa Stairs as well. That has also been spotted out. Looks like about, yeah, two players up here from Nip trying to challenge Ivan Office, but they're pushed back by drones and that lion. The Warden falls off after getting spotted by the EOD or EE1D if you want to elaborate on it. Nitro Cell goes off, does not connect as much as it wants to. Some damage done to Bolo, but he's going to win it out. He gets that very first pick. So TSM we're up numbers two minutes into the round, and they have done a very good job of being able to clear out that second floor, pushing Nip down into the confines of the first floor. Though, Musi will still linger just on top of yellow stairs. Punch holes in the window as he gets droned out. Karate chops the drone out of the sky and then immediately looks towards the skyline in case he gets pushed. No, there's a drone that's going to chase him back down to the first floor where he would join his brother in arms, the other ACOG GIGN operator in the dock of Psycho. It's interesting to me the way that ninjas and pajamas are choosing to hold this out. They are not relinquishing the middle floor and it was a pretty efficient clear of the top floor from TSM, to be fair. But I am definitely scared for Ninjas of Pajamas. There's a lot of potential for this to backfire and to end up being a strong TSM lead. And it's looking like that's going to be the case as Bolo gets his second, looking for the third, sees the player in the bathroom but doesn't hold the angle. Muzi is holding and will win that fight. Julio at the top of Banana is going to see an enemy but land only half of his shots, putting Merc down to about 50. It's a close one there for both teams, but TSM so far on top. Muzi is the player tasked with bringing this back for his squad. This soft wall could be Muzi's death, though, as there is a buck on the other side. This aggressive roam from Nip is not something that I think TSM was expecting to have to deal with, and there's still some drones in play for them to be able to spot them all out. That's a missed opportunity from the ACOG in the hands of Muzi, and he'll get taken out by a chief. It's the skeleton key to do the work. Utility and fragging potential, why not? Doubling up, it's TSM versus Nip now in the final push of the round, but still off site is Julio. He'll watch Spiral Stairs. That essentially isolates Kamikaze on site into a 1v3, but both Merc and Achieved are so low that these toxic canisters, of which there are two remaining for Kamikaze, could be very, very important. Exothermic charge will open up the wall. There goes a frag grenade that gets tossed on down. Julio on the hunt, missing his shots on the no! lion. No, Julio, you can't miss those. And Kamikaze off site, well, he'll miss his as well. TSM manages to take that. A bit of shakes for ninjas in pajamas, and despite as good as that roam was, just wasn't good enough. I think a bit of shakes is being too fair to ninjas in pajamas. Or not too fair. I, I'd say that a little bit of an understatement, understatement even. Um, that was really shaky. Um, that, that, that moment there from Julio, I mean, he is one of the most consistent players on ninjas in pajamas. Uh, really nice great guy, really great player. Um, generally provides a pretty consistent product to Nip. And that miss is going to be highlighted as one of the key reasons why that round might have been a loss for Nip. It's not the only reason, mind you. TSM had full control there. This is really important to note. The round was pretty much over. Julio could have brought it back a little bit closer, but uh, yeah, uh, unlikely he would have won that one again. out. What we do know is that the top clear from TSM was very efficient. They had top floor control with a minute 30 to spare. They turned that into mid floor control within about 30 seconds. There were some shaky moments there for TSM, not gonna lie. I'm surprised at how reluctant Achieve was to use his skeleton key to open up the bathroom walls to apply more pressure to the player he might have expected to be inside a bathroom. That was Muzi. Muzi did get a kill in there. Obviously, TSM thought that Muzi would fall back, go to the site considering the time and the manpower constriction or, that uh, both teams had. But no, Muzi stayed in bathroom, he lingered, and TSM somehow managed to get away with only losing one player to him. Killed him out. TSM have top four control, mid four control, vertical pressure, man advantage, it's all over. Yeah, I think what really needs to be said there, right, is that that round becomes a 50-50 if Nip just wins those isolated gunfights. Bolo's first yes. engagement, the second gunfight as well. Julio taking down the Zofia, then Julio finishing up on the Lion. That was Nip's round strategically, but mechanically it was very much TSM's. So... I mean, that's what we talk about leading to this match, isn't it? Yep. It's that both of these squads, they're the mechanical teams. Jess nailed it, really, when she was talking about it before we were getting right in. It was like one of the last things that was actually said before the match started. And it's just that these teams mechanically are very formidable. You know, you've got probably some of the best aimers in Brazil. You've got some of the best aimers in North America. They're going head to head. They are both. But TSM has made strides to be more mechanically or more, you know, coordinated when it comes to ability. And well, so has Nip. 
Bolo's gonna break on in. He's got the opening duel two rounds in a row, and Psycho will flee. He gets drowned out by Long Desk. Off he goes to the same hatch that we've seen Nip drop down before. A bit of breathing room now for TSM, as they know that they've cleared out at least half of that second floor. They're gonna have to find the rest of it. But as Nip does, they will look to retake Yellow Stairs. This is where Musi was playing on the Rook last time. He's gonna be doing so somewhere downstairs. It's Psycho now that's positioned up on Yellow. So different member of Ninjas in Pajamas, but same position. I really like that Ninjas in Pajamas at no point allow themselves to lose full control. I appreciate it, but it's also a risk. It, it's a big one. And you talked about how it comes down to these individual one-on-ones. Well, it seems through this match that no one's doing better so far than Bolo, who's been winning 1v1 after 1v1. That's two rounds in a row he's gotten both of these starting frags in the match. There's no way Geo makes it out of this alive. He's got two members of Ninjas in Pajamas nearby. Keep in mind that Vigil, when his, uh, when his gadget's active, he's immune to the EOD. Geo's got two angles to play with now. He also will be joined by Achieve at his side. But out goes the Vigil. One kill for TSM. One kill for Ninjas in Pajamas. Inability to land at shots, but the secondary gun goes away. Out comes the primary three for Musi. He shoulders off some damage. What a round for him before taken down by Merc. That, unfortunately, due to the early picks by Bolo, is not enough for Ninjas in Pajamas. So the trade-offs are obviously not good enough. Now here's the tricky bit. You've got Kamikaze holding onto the yellow stairs, and I'm not sure, has the garage been opened up? Merc's gonna get rid of the batteries. That will allow the garage to get open, which is going to give Pojo a great entry to the site. But we're running out of time. Merc is gonna have to join his teammate outside so they can make a consolidated push. Two gas canisters, 18 seconds. That's plenty of time to fill with those gas canisters. Now, a little bit quick on the draw with them, and the peak is just wild and unnecessary. Merc will shut down Kamikaze, TSM take another round. A, actually, not a decent, or uh, not a terrible place, rather, for Nip to be in. Kamikaze could have clutched that out, thanks to the efforts from Muzi earlier, but not the best play there from back white. No, Kamikaze really did not need to take that engagement, especially with the SMG-11, and mm. knowing full well that both of the players on TSM are likely running ACOGs, you're going to have a significant advantage as an attacker looking at that position. Especially where the smoke canisters landed. Yes. If there was a drone from TSM anywhere nearby, well... <laughs> you got to know he's playing by back of white, right? So at that at that point, TSM just needs to have two sites trained on him, and the, the defuse that's going to go off in front of White Van necessitates a push from Kamikaze, which will be caught by at the time Merc. And you said it during the round, and I completely agree. Uh, the biggest thing in that round was Bolo opening the round with two entries. He started things so strong, and that was the same thing Bolo did in round number one. He gets, he gets the first two kills, and then suddenly TSM can't be stopped. The momentum is just indisputable. You get it two times in a row here for TSM. Things are looking pretty bleak for Ninjas and Pajamas, but this is, this is really important to note, guys. You cannot rely on Bolo getting the first two kills of every single round. So it is a trend that will at some point end, but for now, TSM reaping the benefits. The big thing of course, is that not only with TSM, but also with Ninjas and Pajamas, yeah, okay, you're gonna have that slow down a little bit at some point, but both of these squads are the type where if Muzi quiets down, or if Bolo quiets down, someone else will step up. And that's what they rely upon. You gotta be able to have somebody putting up those big numbers to win the rounds for both Nip and TSM. I still think the shakes really play in, you know? Oh, yeah. He's the only one on Nip who's able to get back to get a single kill right now. He's the only person on that scoreboard. Four kills over two rounds. You're averaging two kills a round up against a squad like TSM. It doesn't really matter how good your, or how deep your strategy is. You need to be landing those shots and picking up kills. You know, the very first round, I think that Ninjas in Pajamas' structure of their roam and offsite play was more than sufficient to be able to stop TSM, but they just could not win their duels at all. And because of this, you lose these 50-50 engagements, what becomes a 5v3 or a 5v2 for TSM could very easily have been a 5v2 for Ninjas and Pajamas, at which point yeah. you have more than enough staying power to be able to hold them off. So, I mean, and on that note, what you're talking about, as, as, as soon as the shakes dissipate for Ninjas and Pajamas, a reminder, this is a best of three, that'll probably happen at some point, then we'll have a much more of a match. I mean, I said it at the very beginning, is if both of these teams are gonna be showing up at their best form, at tip-top 
performance, then we'll have a really close, intense, back and forth, high, ac high octane um, match. But right now, it's looking a whole lot like TSM, TSM, TSM. Whoa. Dino will run out, Chief will answer back, so a little bit of a response there for Nip, and it gets a little bit better for TSM, but much worse for Nip, as uh, Merc will cut down Psycho from Connect to Repel. No, no. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to see that TSM's not going to let go of Ninjas in Pajamas, even though Nip started that momentum swing. Zofia spotted on Repel, and there goes our Claymore to take down Kamikaze. Julio puts his shield away, gets caught by Bolo, and now it's the Mozzie and Musi downstairs. Always wonderful to be able to say those two together. <laughs> Subbed out the Roni, instead he's got the Commando in hand, and he'll chase down a member of TSM at the top of Spiral Stairs. Going across, landing the shots onto Bolo, but at the same time the Diffuser goes down above him. C4 out onto the floor, it'll catch Merc, say goodbye. So Musi, two big kills, he's just stat padding at this point though. 30 seconds with a member of TSM on Repel, and lots of noise that'll be made from the Mozzie as he ascends the stairs. He doesn't know where that diffuser is planted. It's default spot behind the desk inside of B, so we know where it is. Pojo can go under Repel or decide to go up the yellow stairs, but you can very clearly see that Mozzie is blind. And Musi jumps out the window, say goodbye. Pojo's there, TSM three rounds in a row. Okay, so uh, great job there to Muzi for some of his kills. Um, I really don't think it rests on his shoulders necessarily. There is something to note though, of course Muzi was not underneath the plant spot when it was coming down. He could have potentially done some work there. Looks like it'll be a tactical timeout by somebody. I I'm seeing microphones deployed here, so that usually, usually tells me that there's going to be a pause. Um, I think it's, yeah, I'm not sure yet, but I think it's Ninjas in Pajamas. There, yeah, there you go. So, Ninjas in Pajamas tactical timeout, that's smart. They're down three rounds in a row. It's looking pretty bleak. Again, to go back to my round analysis there, I'd say that it really what doesn't rest on Muzi's shoulders, even though he missed that C4. Mostly, it's, it's the rest of Ninjas in Pajamas anchoring onto the site. A couple things that really surprise me. There's a Clash in play. How is the Clash nowhere near CEO when the plant is going down from TSM? That's a big big whoopsie there from Nip. Poor positioning overall. Not just that, but Kamikaze's run out on the balcony. What did he expect? I know that they banned Nomad. I know it's gone. Smart from Nip. That'll open up the aggression. But nobody's repelling on Connector without some form of denial, whether it be a Claymore or an air job or something, maybe a player holding it on the balcony. Kamikaze gets shut down as he re he jumps out on the balcony, dies instantly to the Claymore, didn't even check for it. And at that point, yeah, okay, your Clash is rotating over to CEO, but now he's alone because Kamikaze was the escort. He could have actually given some Attack potency to, to the Clash, the who is rotating to the post plant. I don't know, there's lots of layers here, but Nip are seeing, uh, seeming poorly prepared for these rounds that TSM are throwing out. A basic CEO plant should not go that smoothly for TSM, or for anyone, for that matter. We're going to go to Teller's Archives. Nip are grasping at straws in, at this point, I would say. I was going to say, this is where it used to be seen as a Hail Mary of a bomb site, but there has been quite a rise in Teller's Archives. and This tournament especially. And its viability is, is, I would say, quite strong, especially in Latin America, the region that plays this site more than any other. So that's a distinction that you need to keep in mind as well. Mira will finally show up as she is not banned. That is a rare occurrence, but on a map like Consulate, not as rare as you would think. Yes. Now, some things to, I think, put into context what we're seeing. This is TSM's map, map pick. They're up 3-0 on attack where the defenders do not have mute. And there is a prevailing opinion that mute Mozzie, Vigil, Castle, those four operators, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, if you want to call them that, they basically all come together on certain maps to do significant damage to the ability of teams to drone out, gather information, and it gives the defenders a huge edge, very similar to what we've seen out of when you know, teams would run Echo, Smoke, Mira, Echo, Maestro, Mira, so on and so forth. Additionally, these teams have played Consulate a lot. It has been played by them in every single match so far. They have played five matches between the two of them. C4 goes out as we are talking. It takes some HP away from Achieved, but the Repel will hold for now as Nip is very aggressive in Admin Office upstairs. I'll save my anecdotes for just a second here, as it does appear that we are getting closer to action. A slow peak traded off as both members of TSM and Nip fall. 
a great repel in the window, but it does not connect the way it wants to. Kamikaze, the alibi, will scoot off, and Merc is unable to land the shots. There is a dock in play. Pino's still got three stims, so Kamikaze will likely find himself back at full HP if these operators can find a moment to connect. Right now, though, the focus for TSM is still on the top floor, and Muzi's still there to stop that cold in its tracks, playing over by Soda. You can see he's playing a more conservative position to where he was earlier, the reasoning for this. Well, the round's starting to get away from TSM. Bolo actually has managed to make his way in, but he doesn't account for Muzi's rotate. It's strange, because Bolo drone that out. Poor position there from Bolo. Poor... Uh, gun discipline, I guess, not having it up, not ready to take the fight. Muzi will get a, basically a freebie on the sprint in. Now Nids and Pajamas are looking really solid. Geo playing over by Banana, trying to come downstairs to the site. You can see TSM are very split up, but look at that. A repellent from Merc, he covers it with the gunshots. That's beautiful mechanical skill there from Merc. Geo gets shut down, though, as he's trying to solo entry the site. And TSM are looking really, honestly, so far apart from each other in terms of thought process. Muzi's still upstairs as well. He has not been hunted down. Exactly. Merc looked like he was going to be able to do something with it. Kamikaze, who'd taken damage earlier, he has not been healed back up from the dock of Pino, so your guess was good, but wasn't quite all there. Finally, Nip is able to find their very first round, and they'll do so, as you said, it was a bit of a Hail Mary on this bomb site. It worked great. And it worked out very well. TSM's inability to clear out that second floor and never really having full confidence in their hold upstairs really was the almost entire story of that round because Nip did not feel any pressure on the bottom floor site. They didn't really ever lose map control on that first floor and they were just able to have one person, that was the Jaeger, upstairs hang on to uh, to the hatches that you know TSM needed to control. So very well done by Ninjas and Pajamas, but honestly, a bit of a wag of the finger at TSM for not doing their homework. Yeah, really, it just seemed like they didn't know how they wanted to attack the site. And that's, I mean, hmm, strange. It is a very common bomb site, as you stated, and it is seeing itself being represented more at this LAN. We'll see if TSM can correct that moving forward. The good thing for TSM is that uh, Nip won't be able to defend that site again in regulation. The only way that Nip is going to get to go to Tellers again is if we go to overtime. So, if TSM can replicate their past success on these other bomb sites moving forward, then this should be a pretty easy path for TSM overall. They're already at three. That's six rounds in each half, which means that if you get to four rounds, you have effectively won the half. And that puts you in an advantageous position moving into the second, where you will switch sides. Now we're starting out here with Nip going on to bottom floor. And they'll be roaming, of course, upstairs as you do. They'll be roaming in the middle floor as well. Psycho on the top floor, bathroom. He's going to set up a rotation of yellow. His job is just to delay as long as possible. TSM will be trying to clear from admin office because they're thorough. They want to make sure there's no one who's going to be flanking the attack later on. You can see that's why they start here on the far east side on the top floor. Well, they're going to move to the the far west side on the middle floor and then start opening up above the bomb site. As soon as they clamp down on those rotations, those staircases, there's three of them that the defenders can use to get back upstairs. TSM's going to have to either put a drone or a player watching each of them after they push t the Ninjas and Pajamas roamers down to the site or dispatch them entirely. But that's what's going to take so much time. And speaking of time, we've already seen a minute transpire. And not a lot of action, not a lot of clearing or efficiency from TSM thus far. I can get back to my anecdote now, I feel like. Now yeah, that go action, ahead. Now that the action has kind of slowed down. These teams have played Consulate in every single match that they've played so far. Ninjas and Pajamas won it both times against Liquid and MIBR. TSM has won it all three times. So these teams have A never lost Consulate in this tournament so far. It was a 7-2 scoreline against Liquid for Nip, and then an 8-7 scoreline against MIBR, where Nip was very much in the driver's seat and then started to, I guess, take their foot off the gas. For TSM, 7-2 over Rogue, 7-3 over Space Station, the only map they beat SSG on, and then a 7-5 over Navi. So, obviously a comfortable map for both of these teams. You expect them to do well, and you expect them to play as strong as they have so far. Nip and TSM, rather, right now, obviously having the upper hand in this engagement. 
Though this is one of the slower rounds that we've seen, it is yet another garage defense. The third time that Nip has gone down to the site. The first floor will be pivotal for them as Julio hangs out inside of the bathroom. Musi will capitalize on Gio not looking in the right direction, and Gio unfortunately has not been the player that they need in terms of actual engagements. It's a retake of the first floor, and now heading up to the second floor as the Nitro Cell goes out. It'll not connect as that's a fadeaway throw from Julio as he drops down the hatch. Gets the exothermic though, which is big. A frag grenade goes on in, but the target from Ninjas in Pajamas has already moved out. Also, one of the panels on Garage has been opened up. There's Merc to capitalize on Muzi. Psycho sitting above. He can retake when need be. Shotgun of Kamikaze right to the chest of Bolo. Some damage done to the heels of Merc as he manages to evade the blasts from Psycho up top. But they still haven't figured out that Ninjas in Pajamas have gotten out of that first floor. Great shot from Pojo, man. Julio probably should have won that. Will not be as lucky this time as two kills from Nip will seal the deal on the round. They double up on TSM, and they draw closer to being able to call this one a tie in the first half. Two rounds for Ninjas in Pajamas, three for TSM, as we set up for the very final defense from Nip. Big round there for Ninjas in Pajamas. They'll go down, or rather up, to the top floor next. So that last round, um, I mean, most of it really is as simple as TSM were exceptionally slow on the top floor clear. I'm actually really surprised because that was, um, honestly, it was excruciating to watch because we saw TSM have plenty of control. They could have pushed into admin at any time. They could have taken control of the overall top floor at any time. They had a lot of options. Um, and it, it seemed like they they spent way too much thinking about it, I guess, and not enough time acting upon their opportunities. And you always hate to watch that, right? Because we, as the spectators, we can see exactly what's happening. We know that TSM has that window of opportunity. And you would imagine, because TSM has their comfort ban, their mute gotten rid of, that the drone economy on TSM could be sufficient enough for them to be able to establish that information themselves. But that's not happening. And it's a bit, it's a bit weird, to put, it, to put it bluntly. Odd to see, because TSM were, especially considering they were so efficient with their drone economy, but also with just general information uh, in terms of the angles that they're playing from Repel, for example. TSM was so great at that in the first three rounds. And then here, in that last round, just no? Maybe part of it is the way that they're doing their entry. Again, in those first two rounds, what did Bolo do? He, he walked into the building and got two kills. And another thing that I noticed is that not only did he walk into the building and get two kills both those first two rounds, he was droning for himself. Maybe it's just because suddenly Bolo's doing something different and now the entry's not happening, so TSM are not feeling confident enough to push in in unison and as a team and just take control that they need to actually attack the site. I, I don't know. Theory crafting here. But that could be a reason. That evil eye, or rather, um, that Valkyrie cam outside is actually going to give great information to Pino and the rest of his team. Here's the run out for the paper repel. No, a fake out, in fact. I, I, I wouldn't have imagined he would commit to that. It's a very dangerous run out, but he's no, he's going to. This is a long one, Michael. It'll work, though. It must have been just detected as achieved, was not aware of that, and the Valkyrie camera outside is perfect. The one thing that the scoreline doesn't really show you is that Ninjas in Pajamas have been excellent at being able to open up the past couple rounds, and with it, they've been able to take two of the four rounds where they've gotten an opening pick. Of course, they can make it three with this one. Taking out Achieved is huge. Those frag grenades are so critical to be able to push out and give space, as well as the soft destruction, of course, that comes with the skeleton piece. There's an awful lot that really could be accomplished by losing this buck four ninjas in pajamas. Consulate might be a linear map, and it might not always be the best to roam on, yet without a mute present, Nip are still flying under the radar of TSM. The drone work has not been quite as up to snuff as it was in the first couple of rounds. The constant swaps between the Vigil and the Mozzie seems to be a good strategic choice for Ninjas in Pajamas, and it's really been silencing the guns of TSM, because if you can't find the roamers, well, you can't kill them as effectively as you were doing at the start. Muzi's using this spot that he's actually used to great effect in the past inside of Teller, who's waiting for an opportunity to flank. You can see Geo's ready for it, and he'll get a pretty easy kill there on a Muzi, who wide peeks into the angle. Clash inside of Meeting, trying to hold things up. Bolo with the double kill from Long Desk, and he's behind Clash. There's the triple. Can he get one more? He's pretty close, but he looks the wrong way. Kamikaze with the shotgun will shut down Bolo, but he's got to find three more. Not likely to happen on that little of HP. 
It's gonna reload with the SMG-11. Again, with this kit, Kamikaze is gonna be able to get probably one more kill, but the refrag from TSM should be in. The real question is, is TSM gonna be able to get good objective play? Gas canister goes a little bit wide there, so Pojo can readjust, but there's a nice shot on Merc. Suddenly it's winnable, but the last shot from TSM comes in, and Geo will secure the round. A good half there overall for the Americans. Geo ultimately having a very... Did you just call them Americans when the last two left were a Canadian and a Mexican? Well, they are in North America, Parker. You don't call North Americans Americans. Don't be, don't be daft. It works technically. I'm going to stick to it. You just insulted two whole countries. I know. But I am just going to... I mean, as I'm Canadian, just going to accept as it. As a Canadian, I will fume quietly and do absolutely nothing. North America and technically Central, but, you know, still all Americans in a way. What about so. South America? Would you call a Brazilian an American? Because they are in South America. Oh, in America speaking, I guess, but not really. Nope. Like, you just, you know, it's a stretch. It's all really a stretch. It's a technicality. Semantics, you could say. Um, and you're being, well. Being very specific. Yes, specific. I don't think I'm being pedantic. Defending I think I'm being specific. I know you want to say pedantic. I wasn't going to. I felt like you were going to. I stopped myself, Parker. Yeah, but you almost did. And the thought was there in that, that thought. Hurt. I'm sorry. Thank I you. hope you'll forgive me someday. As long as you never call me an American, I will forgive you. I mean, okay, we'll move on. Just as these teams are moving on to the second half of this matchup, and just like how you can move on over and buy some of the new cheapies that you see being advertised in the bottom right hand. Can we just start that today? Screen. What? No, the chibis. The advertisements? For the chibis? Are you kidding me? They've been the whole, they've been there the, the half season of Pro League or stuff. No, 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 I'm not talking about Pro League. I'm talking about for the event. Uh, I haven't seen any on-screen advertisement for the chibis. No? But first half characterized by TSM getting a strong start off, which they were very good at finding information and holding on to it. And then Bolo in particular, sitting at nine frags, was extraordinarily sharp on his entry. Yeah. However, there was a bit of a general cooling off of TSM and a warming up of Ninja's Pajamas, as especially Musi was very good at being able to find the first couple picks in a number of rounds, and his roams were very frustrating for TSM to deal with. Now as we swap sides, the question becomes for TSM, they are going to have to deal with the operator bands on defense, one of which is an Echo, but I'm sure they know how to deal with that, as Geo will hide behind the card. What is Geo doing? He might be as good as dead, but he's, he's going for it right now. No way he's trying to do this. And he's gone, Geo. I I question the play there very much, and everybody from TSM are literally falling to their deaths. Beautiful shot from Bolo. He'll pick up his tenth kill. That's double digits for the young lad. Another mark, a pre-fire, but it misses. Diffuser is down. Bolo sees one, turns around. Very slowly, the rest of his team is dying around him, pitting Merc in a one v three, holding on to the breach hole. Merc is in trouble. C4 inside a piano. I don't know what that was entirely for, but it's very clear that he has panicked and is getting a call to rotate. It's, it's a fake out, C4. He's trying to cover his rotation over to Visa Stairs. He gets that coverage. This will probably be shared up, though. Yeah, Julio's on the locker hall watch. Looking the wrong way there and allows the cross, but wins the fight. That's okay. Ninjas in pajamas, a solid holdout there at the end. And, uh,. A good setup for the plant, though it didn't come in. A yeah, diffuser was starting to go down, but you didn't need the whole thing when it was just the single member left of TSM. Now, for people that might be confused, when you're running on that first floor, it sounds like a stampede when you're playing in the basement. Merc yeah. was very obviously heard as he rotated. There was no way on any earth that they were going to be able to stop him from being able to get back down. Merc is a great player, though. His performance on LAN has trailed what we see of him online. He came into this event with the single highest amount of kills in the first half of Season 11. But the real star of TSM in terms of kills Defenders, has been Bolo, by far and away the most impactful player on this team on the scoreboard. Merc has been much quieter. It's almost like they've reversed roles. Bolo is doing his best Merc impression on LAN, Whereas Merc does Merc online. So as long as somebody from TSM is there to be able to pick it up, well, that's what matters most. What on earth do you think Geo was doing on the ground? Trying to I think you gotta caught kind of guard how on how quickly the enemy opened up the garage. That's pretty much it. It was a really uh quick opening of the garage panel there for Nip. Seconds remaining. 
TSM setting up on the top floor here. Middle is the site. Top the roam. Bottom as well, as you can see. So they're doing the full three split. The way that this works is pretty much you can deny the plant from a C4 below really easily in the main lobby. Thanks to those two drop downs. Pretty much anywhere. Uh, and then you could also deny the plant above. So there's basically two redundancies for TSM when it comes to denial apart from the actual anchor play. And that's a really good setup. We see that one pretty frequently on this middle floor. See how it goes. It makes it so the enemy has to clear out so much more as an attacking team. Bit of a change up for TSM on their operator lineup and the way that they're going to play this one. Some supports flexing on to more aggressive roles and vice versa. For Geo, it means showing his stuff on a frag heavy role as he was playing more support on attack or at least flex. Considerable damage done to ninjas in pajamas. This outside Valkyrie camera as well has not been detected by the IQ in Nip's lineup. Psycho is not too worried about it. Bolo gets caught out on a very cheeky upside down repel from Psycho. He might not be finding the Valkyrie cameras, but he'll find the Valkyrie. And that's good for another opening frag for Nip. Geo will get Psycho though in response. Ninjas Jam is going for a plant. Doesn't seem like there's any actual coverage. C4 from below? No. Top, top, top coverage? No. The run up from Merc? Yes though, as he will down one player. The Diffuser does get planted though. And TSM, while they're looking pretty solid, they still haven't managed to secure all the kills. C4 will get Julio, who was downed in the 2v3. There's one outside for TSM. Pojo will get Pino though. It's now just Muzi who's kind of stuck. He's got to find these players and he will get one. Finds the second's hand, lands the kill. It's just Geo now. He knows where his enemy is and it might just take one shot to kill that Sophia. And he doesn't land it. Two shots is the answer. And Ninjas in Pajamas will take their second attacking round. The good, the bad, and the ugly on that round for TSM, where it seemed like they had it on lock, slowly started to lose it, and then were in utter free fall. And the Brazilian Bolo ends up being the one to do it all. Really, really weird play from Merck as well. Merck, why are you going back inside with your back turned to Musi? You know where you've got him locked down. You're looking in a completely different direction. All you need to do is waste time. The counter defuse was coming in, or the disable rather, from Pojo. It was only a second or two away. You could have very easily continued to bleed time and force Musi to have to fight you or die. Need to Tie game on a bit of a sloppy play from TSM to close out the round in a 1v3, which is a 1v0, and Nip have a ton of momentum. They've already taken their timeout. So TSM, or Bagel in this case, can call for it to try and settle his team down. But there is clearly a little bit of shakes from some players on TSM in comparison to what we saw from Nip in the starting rounds of this game. Mid floor defense again from TSM. They're doing their best to try and hold out this site. Attempt number two. We'll see how that goes for them. Really not a whole lot to say about that last one. I mean, it was just a main door entry from Nip. The really curious bit is that TSM should have had three different ways to deny that plan that came out. Top floor control, bottom floor C4, and the anchors. Now the Capital Firebolts accounted for the anchors, but the C4 from below just didn't happen. And the top floor control didn't seem to do anything. I guess maybe there wasn't someone in meeting, maybe the holes weren't opened up, whatever the case be. TSM with a, just a, a terrible response to a front door plant, which is the most common plant on that bombsite. We'll see what Nip do now. They're gonna change their strategy up, knowing that that won't work again. Oh, it was uh, astonishing with how quickly Nip was able to go in and get that plant down too. I, I mean, they got it for free. Yeah. They're not gonna, so. they're not gonna try it anymore. But this is something you don't see a lot of players do. Is there's a uh, a position from Julio now is he's managed to vault his way over on top of the skylight, and there's a significant amount of power in where he is being positioned. He can catch a cross that comes out from the piano. Anybody who goes up yellow stairs, he can possibly hold off on bathroom if there were a rotate there too. Yeah. So many different angles from that simple position of Julio, and that's really all he needs to do is just sit there and wait for now. Yeah, it's especially powerful considering he's using the glass to try and add an extra layer of 
well, I guess, confusion to the defenders. Usually most people will shoot that glass. If you don't, then he's he's got a little bit of a um, advantage in terms of the reaction time because his position is a little less predictable. There is actually another place you could sit on the other side of the skylight. Most people will sit there. No glass there. Easier to spot that attacker and much more commonly pre-aimed. C4 misses as we are th halfway through this round with minimal action. Just utility work for now. Burning out ADSs, expending secondary gadgets, drones being gobbled up. As you can see, uh, Julio doesn't have any left. As they've likely been grabbed by the Mozzie, but holy hell, there's Musi with two huge opening frags. This trend line for Ninjas in Pajamas now, seven uncontested rounds in opening duels. They have yet to falter since the third round. That is very impressive. And not just opening duels, but the ability to just crush your opponents upon entry. Geo and Bolo gone for Bolo. Well, that's a major bummer in TSM's fortunes. By far and away the best player for TSM. Trying to bait out a plant from Kamikaze. either C4 in hand of Pojo down below. Depending on how this timer continues onward, this could completely derail the plant from Nip, who still haven't lost a single member. The rest of TSM's spread is there. Inside of Piano, but Pojo gets flushed out. It's a drop from Pino. The pulse is there. He'll win the fight. UMP in hand is good enough. If there's a C4 from Achieve, now he will assume the position from Pojo. Diffuser goes off, though, a little bit too late. Down goes Julio to Merc, but the damage is still done as it's yet another successful diffuse for Ninjas in Pajamas. There's 35 seconds, and that's the countdown as Merc jumps out. He was exceptional last time outside. He'll now be joined as both members of TSM are caught. But look at how easy this is. The outline's visible. Psycho with two. TSM are asleep right now, and Ninjas in Pajamas, five of the last six rounds, they are in complete control of this map. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad for TSM. I'll be honest, it's a tactical timeout here for TSM. I think appropriate timing for Bagel to try and fix the major flaws for his team. So many major mistakes being made, for sure. Um, but I really don't know what I can say to the, uh, to the positive here for TSM. The biggest thing is that Nip are reading TSM pretty well. Uh, for example, that drop from Pino, he came in from Visa, he opened up the drop down, perfect timing. He's doing that, why? Because he knows the C4 from below is the primary form of denial on the plant that's going to happen in the main lobby. And there were, in fact, two TSM players in the basement waiting to deny that plant with their C4s. And because Pino drops there, he gets one of them right off the bat. The second one distracted for valuable seconds. The C4 came, but it came just too late, as you noted in the action. And that's all thanks to Pino. Meanwhile, Julio again with those Capital Bolts going in deep, denying the, uh, the players in the actual site doing anything. And at that point, TSM had already last, lost so much uh, manpower, there actually weren't any players on the top floor for TSM to deny with. So, really thorough, clear for NIP. They're establishing all the control they need upstairs, which is not a lot, but they're doing their best to, to get that. They got two kills upstairs thanks to Muzi's entry. It's pretty much the same thing that Bolo was doing in the first half, by the way. Mm -hmm. Muzi establishes that control. Pino denies the C4 from below. You don't need to establish control if he's going to come and clutch like that. And then there's a, just a simple plant, thanks to the bolts. I, I don't know, like, there's not a, it's not a very complicated take from Nip. It's just accounting for all the very basic things that TSM are bringing out. This is really standard everything from both teams. TSM are setting up a pretty standard hold of that middle floor. They're just using all of the tools available. It doesn't necessarily spread you thin with the way the consulate works, but that's what they're doing. On the other hand, Ninja Pajamas, that's an interesting shield. It's uh, usually backwards to what you would expect, but I guess they're anticipating a CEO take. Anyway, meanwhile, Ninja Pajamas, they're reading that pretty standard hold, and they're just countering it head on. So we'll see how this goes as TSM goes to the top floor for the first time. Maybe this is the bomb site for TSM. Tricky bit for them is that they are only coming to top floor after the uh, third quarter, which means that uh, they, if successful, TSM won't be able to defend this unless they, again, until they, uh, unless they get to OT. Black. <laughs> I don't know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. At least you do. I'm, I'm always listening, Michael. Mm -hmm. So, this might be an upstairs defense, but most of the outlines tell us that TSM are down on that first floor, and this is very similar to what we saw uh, when it was ninjas in pajamas defending this site. Obviously, on a map like Consulate, there's a good spread for the Roamers, and 
A claustrophobic map can become even more so depending on what's available for the defenders. Mute being out of the question, which was TSM's ban, obviously. That was their operator ban. They know how to play with this. Well, there's no jump out from Achieve there, but this is a very rough shot for him to make against Psycho. Psycho, one of the best aimers in all of the world. And Achieve is not going to go for anything. Very smart play, I think, by TSM, because you take that gamble as Achieve, you have an 80% chance, roughly, of losing, and then you find yourself down a man. Merc in the main lobby. He's going to be able to apply pressure to that repel if he goes through the right time on the run out. He's got to be careful, though, giving himself away. You can see it's being held. There's the run out. C no, no, not a C4, but actually a camera. Achieve will get dispatched as he gets a little aggressive, so... What you said was not the right play, was in fact not the right play, it just comes a little bit late here for TSM. It's the third member of TSM to play a Valkyrie now, so obviously some, some swap ups that are occurring. Pojo Man, a single shot on the Psycho, and it's good for one onto the head, that TCSG, uh, just like most other guns, well, it's, it's just one and done. But Nip are slowly inching their way up. There's a default cam up in a spotted kamikaze, and he will continuously back away. You can see the blue glow alerts the defenders that somebody is nearby. Musi is inside of sight. How is Musi inside of sight? How does Pojo Man retake it once again with the TCSG? This is Poj Zera in pure effect at the moment. Connector control for ninjas in pajamas as they will try to gun down the maestro that's playing inside of bathroom. You can see that TSM have completely fallen back and it's working out very well for them now. Three unanswered kills, looking for a fourth onto the thermite as he twists around. Kamikaze takes out Geo. That trend line for TSM will break. But 30 seconds. This could be match point for Ninjas in Pajamas. They've held site control for so long, but there has been some hesitancy for them to get the defuse down, and I think it's because they know that TSM is laying in wait. Nobody over by Visa stairs. A retake from Circle is going to happen for TSM, as that's where Bolo is playing, near the top of Spiral. Julio is a little bit vulnerable, and a plant going down next to the deployable shield of Kamikaze. Julio with a kill on Nebolo. He catches him. You'll need some more from the Hibana. As Julio is watching, both members of TSM are isolated. So bearing nine in hand, will have to go for the reload on the Type 89. It's a much better weapon in this position. Pojo will not be able to do anything. He's taken out by Kamikaze! What a shot! Match point for Ninjas in Pajamas! TSM are looking like they're going out on map number one in a hurry. Yeah, that about seals the deal for me. That's match point for Ninjas in Pajamas. And, well, <laughs> Ninjas in Pajamas are getting the initial kill for almost every single one of these. TSM hasn't gotten the first kill in a round since round two. And we are now entering into round 11. It's been a rough go of it um, for TSM overall at the beginning of each round, and that puts them at a disadvantage leading into the later parts of a round. One thing that's really interesting to me is that TSM rotated their C4s back up to address the uh, attackers directly. I thought to myself when I saw that round playing out, very simply, TSM are letting Nip take the site. Because that's the only explanation. That's all, that's all I can really... Attackers That's all I can really reason bomb. out of what we're seeing here. Because they weren't holding their sight. TSM was just giving it away. It was free. And then, uh, for some reason, the only explanation for why you're going to do that, by the way, is you're going to have C4 below. Because then you could just deny the plant and you can win the round. Congratulations. Very little time. Made sense, I guess. It was risky, but it made sense. But then, for some reason, TSM rotate their C4 players upstairs. Maybe I just missed the part where they lost their C4. Maybe I didn't see them use the C4 and miss it entirely. But whatever the reasoning be, it was the wrong call. TSM, if they had C4 downstairs, they probably would have won that. Didn't need to take the fights the way that they did. But, well, that's hindsight. Bad round there for TSM. Great round for Ninjas and Pajamas. The thing that I like the most about the way that Nip took that is not only did they establish site control when they realized they had it, but they kept moving. They kept moving because they knew there was going to be C4 below. It never ended up being a problem. Partially, that might be because of Nip's mobility. They push all the way into CEO. And Nip located. set up a clear firing line, too, because they know where the enemy is and how to address them. Over at the top of yellow. I honestly thought that TSM had that throughout the entirety of the round, and then at the end, post-plant, that's the moment of truth. It's like, you let them plant that? The stat line for Nip over the last eight rounds is just absolutely disgusting in comparison to TSM, who started off so strong and so confident. 3-0, immediately a timeout gets taken from Ninjas and Pajamas, and they have only dropped a single round since then. 
That's the kind of thing you want to see, really. And the one problem that ninjas in pajamas have always had on land is the tilt factor. This has always been a squad that when they start to get a little bit antsy, it really gets to them, and they just blow up. This happened at the Invitational last year in their matchup against FaZe, where they just completely collapsed. With a team like TSM, this is still a relatively young squad. Yes, you've got veterans like Pojo as well as Geo on it. Achieved has been around the scene a lot, but Bolo and Merc in particular might not have that same level of confidence that you see on land. Oh, well, that's nine in a row in terms of opening duels for Ninjas and Pajamas. And down goes Bolo. We'll be able to see the Triple Crown here, which is the round one opening duel and diffuser plant as both panels have been opened up into Garage and Nip. Unfortunately, wah, wah. a team kill. Kamikaze was great last round. That was a beautiful shot. It was a headshot, but obviously not what you want to see. EAP's coming in to try and get rid of some of the utility gas canisters being forced out from Geo. Julio is going to drone in and spot Merc, who will have to relocate at some point. Chief is playing above. That's the big thing here. He's going to be able to open up a lot of this, or he might just not. Nope. Yeah, he's going to commit. Shotgun will open up quite a lot. Ninjas and Pajamas, though, trying to take explosively into Piano, and I don't think Achieved is going to expect this. He might, though, and he does. There you go. One down, but there's a second, and he loses the fight, which means Boozy can pick up his teammate. That's huge for Ninjas and Pajamas. The sight take coming in there, that's three for Boozy in total. Big round for him, and he's doing some serious work. This is absolutely incredible watching how TSM is being utterly dismantled. So more on the shoulders now of the Maestro. Psycho gets caught and goes for the running man at the bottom of Spiral Stairs. Finally, a kick at the can for TSM, but it might be too late. There goes the Nitro Cell. It connects on the Kamikaze. Down goes Musi. No ace at all. TSM have managed to turn this one around and then will finally manage to hold off the Nip victory. Still a couple more rounds before OT is really on the board for TSM, but it's imperative that they stay in as good of spirits as Pojo Man just showed on his face. Uh, so I'll be honest, that was a big win there for TSM. Very close round. Could have gone either way. In fact, for the majority of that, I would have said it was a nip round, but not so. Um, however, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I mean, they're just one round away from pushing it to OT. When we get to OT, though... Well, let's see. So this is TSM's map pick, which means Zinjas and Pajamas picked defense. They wanted to go to defense first. I really wonder what TSM picked for the OT side, because if you pick the map, you pick what you go into on OT first. If TSM decided to go to defense first, then I think that they're going to have some serious struggles, because that was the very first defensive round that Nippers have uh, lost, actually. That's the very first defensive round, I guess I should say, that TSM have won. It's been a weird half. And I'm not sure if uh, if they're going to have a, a good time going to OT. I really do wonder what that's going to be on the starting sides. We'll find out, I guess, in a round if TSM can win this one. That last round, it looked good for Nip throughout. The garage entry was going well. The clear upstairs went fantastically. Then suddenly, once it came to the actual site push, well, the anchors from TSM came alive. Middle floor here for TSM. This has worked really poorly Ooh. for them in the in the past. Some damage done there early to Psycho, but no kill. I was Merc going for a spawn peek. He likes to do this on Consulate. We've seen it on a couple different operators. Taking Psycho out of action could have been such a huge pick for TSM. Yeah. But Psycho, as you can see on the left, not exactly doing the best in terms of frags. Musi is at 19 kills. The LAN record for Pro League matches, of which six Invitational falls under, is 23 set by Citizen and Tokonami. Four kills, and it's Musi. Now keep in mind, the total LAN record is 27. It's set by Moringa at OGA Pit. So quite a bit of work to do for Musi to be able to catch up on that, but he could at least get a record here in Pro League competition. He's going to need overtime to do it unless he picks up a Nace this round. So you need Nace, a 4K will not be good enough. In this case, he, he might be hoping that, uh, that they go to OT. Here's the problem, though. Every single time that the team sets that record, they don't win the match. When Rampy set it on Coastline, they drew. When Citizen set it on land, they lost to Wreck. So if you're Nip, yeah, Musi might be able to break that record, get 24 frags, but that would mean that TSM would have to win the match, as the prophecy foretold, Michael. Yes. Did you say foretold? Foretold. I was trying to say it with an accent. It's prophecy foretold. toad. Foretold. <laughs> yeah. 
You think I? You think that I've, I've gotten this far in life, thinking that four toad is a word? Lots of damage to the buck, and Pino is removed from play with a minute and twenty on the clock. Half of the round gone, and the very first opening pick. Merc was involved as well in the beginning altercation onto Psycho, but wasn't able to do enough damage. It was just a flesh wound, they would say, but a little bit more damage done to the buck is that you can hear Kamikaze on repel taking more chunks away from Merc's HP. It's all window play from Nip, as a lobby defense will be the very final round of regulation, if you can call it that. Overtime will await us. Down goes Psycho. A refrag from Kamikaze on a Pojo Man as the Mozzie had jumped on out onto the balcony. Play from below have achieved as that garage has opened up. A run out is very unlikely. It will have to be a vault as well. A cardiac sensor will just continue to give information to the rest of his team as Ninjas in Pajamas looks maybe for a pick in towards the lobby. But that's where Merc is sitting right now in the very near the default plant spot. Musi is inside of sight. He needs to keep moving and the C4 will claim him. Nothing at all. Down goes Musi. The record will stay safe. Citizen, you are good, man. There you go. TSM with all the kills. You can tell they're fired up. We're going to go to overtime. Two more opportunities for Musi to break that record. Two more opportunities for Ninjas in Pajamas to win. Two more opportunities for TSM to win. Or more. Stay tuned. So, it works out for TSM in the end. And TSM did select attack first for overtime. And I think that's probably the comfort zone. TSM managed to win four of six attacking rounds in the first half. And, well, it bodes well that they decided to go for their stronger side here. Now... It's going to be a basement defense for Nip. If you take a look at the record for Ninjas Pajamas on the bottom floor, they have won it one of the three times they attempted it. Muzi at 19 kills. So close there. So close, four kills? Yeah. All he needs, four kills. And I mean, he can push it even further than that. He's got potentially three rounds here. That's a total of 15 kills up for grabs for Muzi. These I mean, teams are so dialed in, though I highly doubt it's something that he is considering at all. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's something he's thinking about. Definitely not. But we 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 the spectators definitely can think about it. We can consider whether or not he's going to get that record. It would be impressive. Now, in order to have a performance like that, you need to have uh, players on your team like Psycho, like Julio, who are not actually getting those kills. Because that leaves you room to breathe. Position and that's why you see so often when players set kill records, they lose the match. It's because the rest of the team just isn't there. Yes. And <laughs> to, generally speaking, I find that you need two things to go, or two things to happen, rather, in order for you to set those kill records. One, yeah, your team needs to not be there. Two, the other team needs to be playing a little bit poorly. And then, yeah, records, start, they start to come out. Now... It doesn't, it does not necessarily speak to this particular match. I think Muzi's found himself in the right time, the right place many times, thanks to his just 10 out of 10 positioning and his use of this vigil. He's been doing a really great job on the defensive half, especially managing to evade death here on the top floor. Now, he, he is known to be there, not exactly there, but he's known to be roaming because of vigil's ability. It's giving away his play here, but he, no one knows exactly where. And of course, the Vigil could be down on that first floor as well, for yeah. all they know. It's still going. You can see the frustration achieved is all on his own. Musi gets the drone finally after toying with his food for a while. But the problem for somebody like Achieved is that he doesn't really know, and now a second drone will be required. There might not be a mute on the board, but Vigil has been so good at wasting time, and exactly a minute is off of the clock at this point. Very little ground that has been gained from TSM whose attack was far better than their defense. So if they can manage to make something work on this round, they have another crack at attack for the very final and 15th round of this matchup, should they end up needing it. Slow going here for TSM. Because they've been struggling to clear out the roamers yet again, as per usual. Nothing really happening so far in terms of engagements. Muzi's playing at the top of Banana. There's an interesting angle being played there from Pino. Might get somebody who's crossing by Visa. We'll see. So far, the clear has come out, but not fully, as we can see with Muzi playing in the main lobby. Tracer's come out, though, will reveal his position. Does a little bit of damage. It does oh. actually manage to get a kill on the Merc. That's big. He'll rotate over. That's 20 kills now for Muzi. He will be shut down, though, from Bolo, who's also having a really good match. So TSM loses one to Muzi, the roamer, but no more.
That's Merc recoverable. Merc has very quietly taken over the lead for TSM as he's not made very many flashy plays, but he's been there. Some stat padding, but of course, impactful frags aplenty. Under a minute left now. And the stare down involves a 4v4. Frag grenade will deal some damage to Julio, but not a lot as the bandit knows he's got the buck. He sees just for a second the battle dress as he's in hot pursuit, just going around the corner. An easy frag for him to take down achieved. And now TSM will know that they don't have control of that first floor. This makes it very difficult to go in for a plant. Hojo will have to get great coverage, but he's chased out by a smoke. Down the stairs, Geo blasted into another universe by Kamikaze. Still on the stairs is Kamikaze, but Bolo looks for one. He manages to almost get the down onto Psycho, but the flash will completely keep him at bay. Pojo with a single kill, but two more to find. A desperation plant with the timer about to strike zero. A spray through the wall. The C4 will find its target. Match point for ninjas in pajamas. They weren't able to seal the deal in the regulation, but they got one round now, and they just took the best thing that TSM had going for them away. It was the advantage that TSM had, Michael, to be able to attack twice. Big win there for Nip, that's for sure. You can see they are elated. Rightfully so. That could bring map number one in favor for Nip. Reminder, this is TSM's map pick. So if it is the case that Nip win here, then TSM find themselves in a bit of a corner. We have seen some teams in uh, in matches that go to the best of three trade their map picks before through this tournament. It's actually happened a few times. But uh, at the same time, Still, that's that's a strong advantage for Nip here, and it could push them into a 2-0 for all we know. What we do know is that last round was well executed from Nip on the roam especially. That's Defender, the biggest thing. Muzi's roam managed to shy away or get one player, and then we saw Julio in the bathroom push to buck. Now, that was crucial because it eliminated top four control for TSM. Now they have to think about getting flanked. They have to think about their plant location thanks to the open holes in piano. They can't plant anywhere that they would like to, like default front white, for example. And they have to worry about getting shot from the side. So there's so many different layers there that are coming in after Julio kills the buck upstairs. And that's really just on TSM for not clearing on bathroom. TSM's ban on the mute definitely caught our eyes. I'm sure the analysts will take some time to dive into this at the conclusion of the very first map, but there are two theories behind this as to why TSM would do it, and if we were to talk to them in a post-match interview, I suppose they would probably tell us the same thing. Number one, it was designed so that TSM could get away with running Lion as often as they did without worrying about those mute jammers protecting either the roamers or those playing on site. Number two, it's because this is a map that works really well with mute, and Nip is a team that loves to run mute. Obviously, they've excelled with it as before, as this is one of, in my mind, is an operator that really jumps out, that fits this playstyle from Nip, especially on a map like Consulate. So, a very strategic and targeted ban from TSM, but also allowing TSM to be able to play their own game when they attack. I am very impressed with how Ninjas and Pajamas have been able to maneuver around a ban that was designed to handicap them as much as TSM tried to do. Now that double exothermic is actually pretty common from Nip. They've been doing that every single time. I'm surprised TSM hasn't tried to punish it yet. Although the pressure is really high there, and ad adaptation at that level, it's it's minute. You know, it, it is going to give you an advantage if you can manage maybe C4 thermite who's going for a double exo. But at the same time, there's so much else for TSM to be thinking about right now, and I'm sure that again the pressure is probably really getting to them at this point. Now. Garage being open does not give the round two Ninja Pajamas. It just means that they're going to have long angles to play into the site. And as you can see from TSM, they're playing primarily off-site. It's actually almost entirely off-site. I see one anchor right now. No, two anchors right now for TSM. It's your Smoke and your Maestro. That's fair enough. You know, together they can do a whole lot. In fact, TSM has clutched around with just that combination on the bottom floor in the past after putting being put at the disadvantage. But this is still a big risk take for TSM in the way they're setting this up. Nip have three people aligned towards that garage panel, which as you can see is entirely open. And the frag grenades will need to be the things that are used from Ninjas and Pajamas to take out the evil eye cams. I was going to note the lack of a Thatcher for Nip. Not always an operator that Nip likes to have in their lineup. But with the way that those evil eye cams will often be positioned, especially with one either being by white car or, or, or white van and black car, they're going to be on the ground. An EMP is great for being able to open them up. We already heard them tase away a little bit of damage onto Julio. It seems like here's the execute as Nip just runs right in. C4 does absolutely nothing, but three members of Nip are all on top of each other. Musi down, Pino down, Psycho down. It's all on Julio as Kamikaze is down, and a flawless round from TSM to answer the push from Nip.
<laughs> these two teams so close to one another, the very first flawless round of this matchup. And we have a 15th and final round to settle it. So I will be blunt. Uh, Ninjas in pajamas mm -hmm. went for a rush strat mm -hmm. and then all rushed into their own smoke and then turned around and died. So you, it's cool if you want to go for like an explosive take into the garage. I think that's really, really neat. And I think that might even be like the only way you're going to be able to pick away at that round considering Nip put no effort into clearing out the top two floors. Yeah, sure. Okay, you can make that work. You can make that work, sure. Uh, but if you're going to turn around at the smoke, then don't put the smoke there. Because at that point, you're just giving a second opportunity for TSM to find their ground and win the gunfights. It's exactly what happened. Ninja Pajamas rushing into their own smokes. <laughs> They're like, wait a minute, we can't do that. Because if we rush through our smoke, we're going to die. Then they all turn around and die. So, I mean, effectively, Nip kind of lost the round for themselves with the Capital bolt placement, I guess. It's a weird, weird round. They're going to go to... Uh, Tellers for the next one. To be clear, I think that there is a lot to be said about other ways Nip can take that. Like, for example, we actually saw a round from Nip very similar to that, where uh, they actually managed to win, I believe, instead of explosively rushing into the site. First thing they do is they clear piano, and they do that just by rushing up yellow stairs. Like, oh, we're gonna take piano now, go! And then two people run in, they kill Achieved up there, and then they have top four control, and now they can pressure the site really well, and everything's great. Yep. And they rush into the site in unison with that yellow stairs, with that top four control. But the way that Nip did it there, I mean, I really, I'm not really sure what they were thinking, to be honest. I think they were thinking that TSM would have been maybe a bit more aggressive or at least pushed out in a more structured way, but TSM held the line really well. I got to give a lot of credit to TSM for the way that they just held true to the formula that they had established. Yeah, to be fair to them. They didn't give a single inch to Nip. Oh, and no. Now goes Musi, and if this is it, there's the record is safe. Citizen, your record is safe. Palu, your record is also safe. So you don't need to worry too much. And the Jaeger, who peaked a little bit early, well, you can't be giving those up. TSM coming alive at the right time in the latter half of this matchup. Almost a perfect bookend if TSM ends up prevailing. They were very good at the start. There was that mushy middle where they didn't do so well, and then they hardened up in the final rounds. And, well, TSM now looking to do something that on the previous take on the Tellers, all the way back in round number four, they, they were very ineffective at doing, which is grabbing control of that top floor. They managed to do an awful lot of damage to Psycho and chase him off, and just like that, a single drone will show them that they have control of Admin and can swing on in. Yeah, that was such a big pick on Tamuzi, and honestly, it, it should win the round straight up for TSM, as should that missed C4, for example. Geo standing on top of a filing cabinet, and he will be safe. Now, Ninjas of Pajamas losing a lot of tools, a lot of manpower, a lot of HP, as you can see on Psycho and Kamikaze. Everything looking great for TSM, on the other hand. The only thing is that they have to worry about the time, of course. They don't have to worry too much. A little less than half the round. C4 will land for Psycho. It's a little bit of bounce back for Ninjas of Pajamas. Interesting angle being played from Pino. That's very dangerous that he challenges that. Very, very well played there by the Pulse to be able to give the calls. We'd already seen a C4 get burned out with minimal success. It was intended for Geo, and the second one will find him. That's a frag onto the back of Pino from Bolo as he continues to mercilessly punish anybody from Ninjas in Pajamas who finds themselves in the line of sight of that LMG. Another for Bolo, down goes Julio, and TSM seemingly have been able to start catching the brakes as it's a 1v4 and a 0v4 map number one and extending their perfect record on consulate here at the Six Invitational, TSM will go up 1-0. A big win there for TSM, but a close one to be sure. Ninjas and Pajamas, they brought it all the way down to the end. And yeah, Muzi peeking a little bit wild, losing his life. <laughs> and that did end up costing Nip in the end, but uh, there are a lot of other layers to that. To be honest, Ninjas and Pajamas, their defense wasn't fantastic of Tellers, but more importantly, TSM's attack was exceptional. For whatever reason, TSM looking ex just really good on the attacking side of Consulate. That was their biggest strength. Now, that was 20 kills as well for Musi, as you can see. Obviously, there's a couple more he would have wanted, but at this level, you know, Musi's focus is on the fact that his team will win, not whether he does well. 
The analysts said that the map pool that will be played today with Cafe up next and Bank as the tiebreaker, if needed, very much benefits TSM. With how close this one was, given that it was TSM's map, let's see if they still think that as we'll let the analysts take over. Thanks so much, Parker and Kicks. Yes, hell of a game. Definitely was way closer than we were expecting, especially the way that things started off for TSM. It's like a deja vu with their last game between Dirk Zero and BDS. And we're sitting here listening to both teams, and you feel like TSM are just, they're in the mood, they're talking, you know, they're, they're making jokes, they're making fun of things, and it really makes it easier for them as the match progresses to keep their cool. But NIP got so close so many times. Alex, how are they able to figure out their opponent's TSM, especially on the second half? I, I mean, mostly just, uh, what was he doing? Fair and enough. Everything for the first half of that game just died when it's on. him. You, you, you got to give a little bit of credit to uh, to Nip for, for doing that much. We have, they, they've lost twice on, on the stats we have so far, right? And it in all, all ways would favor TSM on paper. So seeing them do this is super impressive. But in all fairness, TSM stayed really calm through the whole thing. And I think we're both surprised, especially with uh, I mean, we were definitely both surprised with how Nip did. And, and seeing TSM just seemingly not that worried about it at any point. Their comms were calm, collected, and they made a few. Rushes today weren't working at all, or aren't working at all for anyone here, Jess. No, not at all. Look, uh, I think it was as soon as that smoke popped off and everyone became a little bit disorientated going through it, and they all just sort of collected up there. Um, I also think that that's a call that if you don't make before the round begins, then no one's really prepared for yep. that, and it kind of becomes a little bit confusing mess. So um, I did say to start off with that uh, I was so concerned about this consulate pick. Um, I do want to criticize Nip dramatically for allowing Consulate to go through. Uh, clearly they had counter strats, clearly they were prepared even though it was one of their worst pick maps. Um, but I, I think there was possibly two or three other maps they could have taken a much better calculated risk on and to pick Consulate, which is arguably TSM's best map, was just a very big failure in their options. Yeah, and there were rounds though from TSM where they're, especially when they were defending Lobby, it seemed like they had a hold on the retake every single time. We could hear the call outs like, yeah, you know, they're planting default, they're preparing themselves with everything, they're fighting back. But then every time there's someone unexpected, like we saw Muzi on the IQ, for example, jump out, push in from Visa, find two kills for free. The Maestro, a couple rounds before that for TSM, stayed <laughs> literally by the window for a solid 20 to 30 seconds trying to fight back, but he couldn't see the one player that was left around the lobby, and they lost the 3v1 again. The rounds where TSM should have won it and should have won before they even went to OT, I really want to dig a bit deeper into that before we finish off onto Consulate. What do you need to recover if you're TSM to focus on for map two before we enter Cafe? I mean, at least they have the you know the win going into next. So that, that, that helps quite a lot. They don't seem disheartened. It, the, the fact that they struggled a little in consulate doesn't seem to really affect them. They, they, I mean, they, they're huddling up right now. They, they look like they're, they're getting ready, right? Yeah. This is the usual TSM, like get together, yeah. have, you know, have your final talk, your final pep talk, and then go in. And Bagel has definitely been doing a lot of work for the team. You can tell the effect of what the coach has on the squad from the way that they keep calm and relaxed because we, we were talking about the role of a coach last night, right? There you go. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people underestimate the role of a coach. I mean, it's not just there to sort of go, hey, here's some strats or hey, here's some direction in the game of Siege. It's there to give you an absolute leader. And the way that all of the players turned around, and we, we actually see the players right now, ladies and gentlemen, and they turned around and they all looked at Bagel during the timeout and they're nodding, they're engaging. The body language is obviously being received. And that is a team that respects their coach. And that is one that is obviously influencing their players. That doesn't mean that TSM lost badly. They made mistakes. Mm -hmm. Muzi was popping off. The entire strategy was built around him. We see that for Team Liquid, for example, building a lot of strategies around Nesk on their side. It's not out of the ordinary. But that was map number one. Cafe is coming up. Let's take a look a bit about the stats and what we have on offer on this map. Because TSM have been extremely flexible with a lot of technical maps, maps that require a lot of soft destruction as well. Mm -hmm. Cafe definitely fits that standard. Yeah, look, I think and I believe that Nip is undefeated on Cafe. Not that they have a lot of statistics to look through. I think it's two times they've played Cafe and they're undefeated 
both times. So there's not a lot of statistics to go through. But of course, for TSM, I mean, Cafe, they've only ever banned it once. They won it three times and only lost once. So I feel like it's a yet again another even map. Mm -hmm. Not the conch that was meant to be an even map, but I, I feel this one should be far more even and we'll see a, a very close scoreline. It's going to be a little bit different than, than Consulate in terms of how they're going to have to attack it because you, you don't have the same way of cutting off lines of sight, especially for top floor and, and bottom floor, right? They're, they're, it can be really difficult to get the split where you allow people to like set up your execute and, and get stuff done. I don't think Mossy's going as ham as he did on, on Consulate. I think that's something we see once in, in a game. So that, that probably helps TSM a little bit as well. Yeah, now Operator Bands, what do you expect for this one? Because on, on Cafe, we see sometimes one Heart Breacher, sometimes a Thatcher gets banned to enable a Clyde and a Mute plus a Mossy. That, that trio on this map specifically is very difficult to deal with. Or you do it the LG way, for example, in North America and just say, you know what, we're not going to even play bar. We're just going to sit down and reading and play in mining. So actually, it's very interesting. Both teams have the exact same default bands for Cafe, both a Thatcher and a Mirror. Mm. So someone's going to have to change up here and let the other one take the reins of the Thatcher and Mirror ban. Um, I would like to see possibly a hard bridge ban, some, something that is a crutch for a lot of teams, especially on this map. Lines of sight are hard to gain, and the only way you can do it is with a hard breacher. So get it out of the way. See if it knocks a little notch out of their belt. If I'm CSM, I want to get at least one of the C4s off the board. Yeah. Fair that, enough. That, that's got to be rough. Losing one in admin every round and on console, you don't want the same thing happening in piano now. Yeah. Maybe the Valkyrie, maybe the Mozzie. Uh, probably not the Mozzie, I guess, with the current strategy. So maybe Valkyrie or the Pulse would be a ban there up there. But we'll have to look, take a look at that as we head into game. I guess that right now we're pretty swayed between, yeah, actually, any one of them can, can take it. And we go to map three. That'll be bank if we go for it. But before that, we have to go through Cafe TSM versus NIP. Gix and Taro, take it away very much. I, I don't know if you caught us there. I don't know if I was a little bit too eager to get on in, but uh, let's try that one again. <clears throat> thank you so very much, Milosha. Thank you so much, analysts. Cafe, this is Nip's pick, and we're going to get on into it, or rather, see what we can do between these two teams. This is a good map for TSM. Has Cafe been played by Ninjas in Pajamas so far? Yes, it has. Map won against Team Liquid, and Nip actually lost. Additionally, the two times that TSM has played this map, they lost to Rogue 2-7 and to Space Station 3-7. Neither of these teams at the Six Invitational have won this map. Obviously, the complete opposite of Consulate, where no team had lost it. So, here we are. Operator bands coming out. TSM starting on defense. Nip started on defense the first map. Obviously, with them being different map choices, they're going to switch sides. Nothing, nothing really that strange here. Dokubi, Thatcher, Mira, and Goyo. Nip banning Thatcher. Well, Latin America banning Thatcher is never a surprise. It's a weird thing that happens quite a lot out of the Latin American region. I mean, it happens in other regions too, infrequently, but it does. Um, and basically just forces you to play the game in a very different way. Um, you're all, pretty much all of your electronics on the defense are going to be now more vulnerable, of course. You're not going to be uh, clumping up your lesion traps, for example. Your Valkyrie cams are going to be detected because they're going to be really loud noises when they get hit by those EMPs. Same thing for the Yokai drones. They're going to drop from the ceiling. Jaeger ADSs, they're not going to be as effective, so they're going to you know, be eliminated through walls by those EMPs, and so you won't clump your ADSs together, which we're seeing is being more common lately. Defenders Same thing for evil eyes. Evil eyes can get opened up. you got to be more attentive with your evil eyes. you got to push them up when the EMP comes in, so it's harder for the attackers to shoot the open shutters. Lots of different things now TSM has to consider now that that's not going to be a thing. All that's just... Would you say all things considered? A lot more things to be considered. All, all things, things considered. considered. You could say that. I mean, it would be... I'd say that. It would be awkward, but you can say that, yes. I understand what you're doing right now. What are you talking about? What? Anyway. First defense is going to be kitchen downstairs. Now, if you go back and you look at the way that TSM have played Cafe, you begin to wonder, is there some sandbagging that happens here? 
What's sandbagging? Sandbagging is when you deliberately lose a map so that you can hide things in the future. That has happened, actually, at this I event. I mean, Fnatic even said so in their exit yep. interview after they toppled Empire. Very public they said about that it. they had deliberately hidden things. Obviously, they're going to hide Merc because he's going to wait to fire up. So this is a bold and strategic choice as Ninjas in Pajamas with the opening pick. And I don't know what Merc was trying to do or accomplish. Maybe he's just going for a, a cheeky, cheeky early pick. To be fair, Ninja Pajamas have gotten the opening pick almost all of these rounds between these teams. So TSM have known have been known to bounce back from that sort of result. It's not the end of the world here for TSM, but as it gets worse, Bolo hits the ground thanks to Julio's efforts. It might be the end of this round. Ninja Pajamas is establishing a pretty sound lead at the beginning. Some aggression here from Achieve. He gets droned out and he will likely be pinched on later on. There is a player from Ninja Pajamas over by Cocktail trying to come in here to kill these two TSM roamers. That's Pino, but he gets shut down by Geo. That's a big win there for the Bandit of Geo. TSM retain control of the top floor. A quick reminder, this is a kitchen defense <laughs> and there is currently nobody on site. Muzi has read this. No, he hasn't read this. And actually he's gonna die to the Maestro. I thought he was going into sight. Pojo Man gets one for free there, but the rest of Nip have realized and are starting to rush in through prep. Julio is very low on HP, but he's not going to be the one defusing, so you don't need to worry too much. There's another for Pojo. As I said earlier, he's channeling his best Poge Zera. He'll go for the reload and take about a minute and for him to be able to accomplish that, given that it's the Alda. He'll pop up. Down he goes, the 556. Five, Kamikaze managed to win that one out through the hole that was opened up next to Pojo. It's a 2v2 as Psycho has been down and Kamikaze will need to go for the plant. But here's here's Geo coming up behind. There's a couple different members of TSM there now looking to retake the site and they have done so quite successfully and forced out the two members from Nip. That'll leave just Julio to wade through barbed wire as gridlock. It'll take him roughly an hour to get into the site and Achieve shuts him down for TSM to be up 1-0. Achieve was very exposed to Julio for a good while there but Julio just did not peek and because Achieved was allowed to meet up with Geo in the middle, in the kitchen, it was pretty much a done deal there for TSM, secured round. Really beautiful retake of their own bomb site. I'm super surprised TSM took that as well. Ninja Pajamas managed to extend themselves, I think, a two-man advantage at the very beginning of the round. That should be it. Round over. Ninja Pajamas just consolidate their efforts, hit the site, done deal. But no. TSM clutch up, thanks to Geo and Achieved, and actually also Pojoman. I mean, well, Bolo and Merc, the two early picks, those are the players that you expect to be clutching things. Those are the players that you expect to be getting the kills for TSM, but no, it's the rest of the supporting cast. Um, beautiful job there for TSM as a whole. It's weird to say supporting cast because it doesn't really apply. The interesting thing about both Ninjas in Pajamas and TSM, and we've actually been having this noted about a lot of teams at this LAN, is that in the past you used to have a lot of, um, you know, like hard support players or the players that are usually the backbone of the team. They allow for everybody else to get the kills. Again, we've been saying it a lot. Everybody on both of these rosters here can step up and get the kills when it's necessary. And I think that the last round, the one we just watched, perfectly highlights that. It's a really interesting change in Siege because a year ago, you just didn't see that happen very often. It did, sure, but not often. In fact, I think probably one of the first teams to ever have that kind of reliable formula where everyone can perform was G2. And that was during their glory days where they were winning everything. We're past that now where, you know, there's serious competition everywhere. And you've got pretty much most teams who have a fully competent roster. Most teams in the fully competent roster. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm every team at this land, that's for sure. That's true. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to throw shade or anything at anyone in particular. Sure seems that way. Anyway, I mean, Jordan's tier three team that's never played in a go for doesn't have, and you know, who's Jordan? Exactly. <laughs> anyway. This is going to be a defense of the second floor down in reading room, as TSM do not like playing cocktail. We saw this in their matchup against Space Station. That top floor bomb site is something that has either been strategically hidden or deliberately hidden because they are not very good at it. Regardless, they're going to play on that top floor. So while they might not defend cocktail, they'll still at least position themselves on the third floor to allow Nip 
to be able to drone them out. Now, not every team is going to clear from the top floor down. Some teams will just simply go through that reading doorway. Some will start from the bottom floor and go up. There are different ways to be able to toy with the verticality on a map like Cafe. That's actually really big. A Chief has two drones that are giving him a lot of information. He's going to peek into white, win one gunfight, and another on to Muzi. Muzi doesn't normally lose those. The C4 does go a little wild, wide, but Eno does actually incur some damage. He will get Merc, though, who is trying to retake onto the white staircase. So, about even here, but Achieved has eaten a little bit more damage than Pino, so advantage to Nip. And Nip have wrangled away control of that top floor, which is big. So, all things told, not a bad start for Nip. And TSM doing very well exactly what they need to do, which is hold that control for as long as possible and now let your anchors just ride it out. And well, you've still got Geo and Pojo Man waiting very patiently. Pojo with the all day able to mow anybody down, and he's got a sight train for the moment somebody drops through the hatch. He'll fall right into that lawnmower and just get absolutely chewed up. Geo inside of A, though it's almost always going to, or in double A, they're both A. Yeah, this side is bugged. Yeah, this is the third time I've seen it. I, I was going to say, I've never actually noticed that both of them are, both yep. of them are bugged. All right, cool. Well, anyway, inside of fireplace, or dining as a lot of times we call it, no diffuser going down just yet. Kamikaze sprays through Geo, and he'll attempt. Droid, as I said, that people don't usually plant there. Julio will hold so much power on his angle. There's one for Julio and another as that's a massive final play from Ninjas in Pajamas to be able to take that round. Excellent coverage from the Brazilian team as an unconventional plant spot. Most teams favoring reading ends up working out quite well for Nip. Nip didn't even need the plant there. Julio with the excellent cover denying the push from the defenders. It'll be a reading defense yet again for TSM. They think they can do that one better. And I think they're probably right because that was a solid round for TSM overall. It seemed like they were going to be able to secure and hold out the end, but they lost control over dining. Why did they lose control over dining? Because their smoke died on a relocation attempt. I, I don't know why he was trying to relocate at that time. It was probably ill-advised. He's got a shotgun SMG-11. The clock is getting down to zero. Maybe just play in the corner with the reinforcements and wait out the round. It happened, though. It's done now. Moving on, we'll see if TSM makes that same mistake twice. But I, I seriously doubt it. All right, it's not TSM, but Geo specifically. No correct on it. You know, think of hindsight really un useful for all these players. Again, these are the types of players that are going to be able to adapt to the small little mistakes they made in that last round and just completely correct them moving forward. And it's not all on Geo too. I mean. The hold for TSM upstairs was great, but there were some unnecessary losses. Like, for example, Merc trying to come up those white stairs. I'm not really sure what he was thinking. Maybe he was trying to reconnect with the players upstairs and try and allow them to rotate back safely. But that's what the drop down is for. Maybe, maybe I missed something and the drop down wasn't actually uh, opened up. But if that's the case, then I, yeah, poor, poor setup. Whatever it is, we do know that TSM came close to winning that one. So it makes sense that they're going to try it again. It was a real nail-biter of a round. Yeah. Julio obviously playing that really pivotal role at the end. Bolo gets caught on a cross. Merc had got caught on a cross in the previous round. So this window play from Nip is catching TSM off guard. I am very surprised, actually, that a team like TSM, who are as good as they are, are letting those very simple mistakes punish them. So I, am, I will say, uh, Ninjas and Pajamas in particular are probably one of the better teams when it comes to repel play. And we do see slightly less repel work being done lately than usual, although that comes in waves, so that's going to be an up and down sort of thing. Nip are using it, that repel to great effect. Psycho's going to get shut down by Merc, thanks to the evil eye distracting him. Really good use of teamwork there. Merc and Achieve both peeking him. I mean, that's a, that was a three-way crossfire there for Psycho to walk himself into. So really just bad information gathering from Psycho, and he should not have been pushing it the way he did. But yeah, uh, Nip are really good at using Repel. I think that was just the point I'm trying to highlight. I was really impressed by their play on Consulate 2 on those Repel. So, do you have control of the third floor? Well, only half of it. As you know, there's one in the bar. A good read from Julio to anticipate somebody playing over by Cocktail, and that's where Pino's gonna go on to repel. All the while, the little mozzie of oh. Achieved will creep on up. Julio doesn't hear the C4 rip. Another for Achieved! He's playing this masterfully, and Diffuser as well will be his. 
Though it's a play onto the Maestro, finished off as the as the vault on over from Muzi, and a knife comes out just to take care of what little was left of Fojo Man immobilized on the ground. The big challenge for Nip is going to be to grab that diffuser inside of the back storage room of the bar. But two members of Nip are near enough by. It actually looks like TSM are letting them have it for now. Attackers I mean, their diffuser. plenty of time wasted, I guess. Relocation here from Merc. He's going to go back downstairs. Another rotate that is caught, and Pino will shut it down. And leaves just achieved and Geo in the 2v2 versus Pino and Muzi. This is a really tense and close 30-second call on to reading. TSM have been trailing Nip in terms of close situations like this, and TSM will need to be better, as you know there's likely going to be a default plant going on in the next couple seconds. Diffuser is in the hands of Newsy. Oh, he's been so good, and it's a rotate coming out now. As just slow and steady, 4-Nip will hopefully win them the race if you're a fan of their team. They're just waiting very patiently. TSM not going to give them a single inch. Geo takes down Musi. That's Diffuser as well. And down goes Pino as it's a repeat from Achieved all the way over by 90. Very well played by TSM. And if you're a TSM fan, you got to have a little bit of nerves in those situations because the trend line over the 18 rounds that have been played so far today is that when it is as close as it tends to get between these two teams, TSM has no advantage over Nip. It is the other way around. So... In close contests, Nip have just been superior. TSM managed to change that on this round and pick up their second of three. You know, it's weird because we've seen so far through this through this match, actually, I'm just taking a gander here, and it looks like TSM has maybe had like four opening kills total. I'm only seeing four, maybe five. Mm -hmm. So that is that is really low for two maps. And yet, at the same time, TSM are currently in the, on the winning trend. They are in the lead for map number two, having won map number one. It was close, yes, but somehow TSM keep making the comeback happen in these very close rounds. You really don't see that very often, and I, I gotta be impressed by it for TSM. Achieved in particular is the highlight here right now. As you can see, he's putting up seven kills. The next person closest to him in the entire match, well, I mean, there's three of them. There's Julio, Pino, and Gio, who all have three. So really achieved right now is the hero for TSM. We'll see if he can keep that going. Usually if you see early kills being put up by a player, it'll start to taper off later on, and other people will start to contribute. That's par for the course in Siege. And that's, again, that's one of the reasons why you've got to have that well-rounded, versatile roster where everyone can contribute. Ninja to Pajamas setting up for a bakery take, it seems, but they can rotate as much as they want to, and they're known to do just that. We saw that perfectly highlighted in the last round, in fact, where Nip were committed to the breeding take, faked it out, and oh, what a oh. run out from Achieved. He gets Julio, a great read there. He must have heard the uh, Julio go on drones on the gridlock, and, and that was the, uh, well, I guess the right play, as it turns out. You were talking about those opening picks and opening duels, and that's absolutely huge to be able to do that. Mm. Number one, the amount of control that a single gridlock is able to show on red stairs, white stairs, and very common rotates is huge with those track stingers. You're going to make an awful lot of noise if you try to come back. You're going to take some damage if you try to sprint through it. It's not an ideal scenario for any flanker. Additionally, it's the only set of smokes that Nip had that are now gone. So. You don't have to worry about a possible smoke execute. That is exceptional, and obviously there are evil eye cams there from Pojo Man that would stop it, but at the same time, you can breathe a little bit easier. Now, it is a kitchen defense here, and Nip are clearing top bottom. They want to get rid of any of the roamers. Merc will be spotted. Not playing Vigil, he's on that Jaeger, so he's going to have to relocate. He can continue to waste time, though. Legion Traps will give away Pino's location as will the Valkyrie camps. Merc is going to hear that as it's been relayed to him. He will address it. Cycle, though, going to drone out dining and spot Merc. That's a lot of drones wasted on finding Merc and no capitalization from any of the roam hunters on the side of Nip. Merc will continue to linger and oh, 
Opportunity missed there from Dino. He'll drop down, hit the Legion traps to give away his position. Achieved now fully aware of his opponent. And he's got the Legion in his foot. Uh, lands the shot. Kamikaze will get Merc upstairs. But Achieved still persisting. Still that top performer for TSM. And this is looking pretty bleak for Ninjas in Pajamas. This whole round is Achieved right now. Not just in terms of the intel work he's done for his team by these Q-Mines going off. And Achieved being able to give that information to his fellow teammates. But additionally, what comes from his ability to do work in a fragging potential? He's got nine kills right now. We'll call that the poor specialist. It's the 9-1-1. There goes the wall inside a bakery. It'll blow open. Geo is prone, and if he has a nitro cell, he can toss it on out. You see, he does indeed. It's ready, and in his hands, waiting for somebody to hit that barbed wire. Door getting punched out. It'll blow up, but it does nothing. Kamikaze now surveying the work he's just done inside a kitchen. The three members of Nip will need to push on in. Down goes one to Pojo, man. Another is Geo looking. There he goes. He has it. Psycho takes out Achieved, so all the hard work from the Legion will be no more. But it's a swing, and Bolo gets the very final kill. Another for TSM. They're off to a hot start. The only real mistakes being made there from TSM, to be honest, are the two missed C4s that were a little too preemptive or a little bit too late. And the roam from Merc, which did manage to peel away from uh, some time and did manage to get some drones. But apart from that, not a whole lot of work being done by Merc upstairs before getting shut down. But that was all compensated for by the incredible performance, not only by Achieved in terms of the kills, but also, like you said, in terms of those lesion traps. So much information being gathered, so much work being done on an individual level. And you could see him sitting atop the scoreboard of TSM with nine kills. It just keeps getting better for him. You can imagine he's going to try and rack that up as much as possible on the defensive side. And probably when we switch over to the second half, it will start to get a little bit less amazing for Merc. That's usually what happens. But, uh, you know, we aren't going to know until we actually get there. About now. Or not Merc, but rather a Chief. <laughs> TSM played Hopefully. Cocktail one time, by the way, against mm -hmm. Space Station, and that was all we really got to see of them. They have been almost allergic to this site. So now they will go with only one other defensive round here afterwards to the top floor bomb site, one of the least played, other than, of course, mining and dining. And if TSM ends up being successful, then they're not going to be able to go back here. So it doesn't really matter. But I wanted to see if they were maybe hiding something with the site. Ten seconds left. We'll see. I imagine, uh, I, something I want to note on is I imagine that Merc's probably going to start to wake up in the second half. That's like, that's my prediction right now because he's had a lot of, uh, a lot of moments where he just gets pinched on his roam mm -hmm. and he's wasted time, but he hasn't actually managed to contribute any kills. But you know, you know Merc is hungry. You know he really wants to contribute on that scoreboard because that's what he is so good at. It just hasn't happened yet. I find that's actually the case, though, for a lot of matches for DSM, where Merc starts off pretty slow and then starts to speed up as time goes by. He was very deceptively strong on Consulate. He ended up very. being close, if not the top frag. He competed with Bolo for most of it. He just doesn't do anything flashy. And yeah. well, The other thing, too, is that so many games online, Ooh. well, you end up with Merc being the by far and away the star of the show. It's far more even. And we see that, actually, with Pojo's shotgun being too much to handle for Psycho, as TSM, within 40 seconds, already have a pick onto a very heavy utility operator. Achieved came very close to death there, but he's going to get away free. Bolo will get Pino after Pojo eliminated one, what and there's Achieved. So Ninja Pajamas now at a 2v5. With a minute off the clock. This is a 4-1, ladies and gentlemen. This is pretty much a done deal at this point in terms of the round. I believe Pojo would call this round real ignorant. What? From TSM. Oh, okay. He loves to say, he loves to say, we're going to do some real ignorant stuff. So. Oh, yeah, because they're getting very aggressive. Very and... aggressive. They start taking mm -hmm. tons of chances. And when you're a team as skilled as TSM is, you can just kind of do this. And if you're a Nip's head and you're bullying them, that's a massive advantage that you can continue to leverage to just knock Nip farther and farther off. Now, it is also a cafe defense right now that TSM is excelling on, and they are one kill away from a flawless round. They won't get it because of Kamikaze. The pulse is just a little bit too slow. Bolo could have possibly prevented that flawless from happening, or at least guarantee a flawless, but no. Still, good enough for at minimum four rounds on defense of cafe. That's where you want to be. Yeah. Everything is working out for TSM. Nip don't need to panic just yet, though it is their map. Neither of these teams have been particularly good on Cafe here in Montreal, so somebody is going to have to win it. Neither team has. Right now, TSM are just doing as you would expect them to do on the side where you expect people to win more than not. 
A 5-1 here is going to be pretty hard for Nip to recover from, to be honest. Just to put it just bluntly. A 4-2 is workable. Nip can make a 4-2 turn into a actual map win and bring us to map number 3. Can being the keyword there, because it's... It's really up to them how much they're going to be able to Attack push that. To locate and defuse bombs. Right now, it's looking a whole lot like TSM across the board, though a lot of these rounds are pretty close. Not that last one, mind you, but many of these rounds, Nip find themselves competing for the eventual loss. Now, we are going to reading for the next bomb site. This is the only site that Nip have won an attack on. And that's, I think, definitely very important. If Nip can salvage this one here in the first half, end at 4-2, again, it's workable. Ten seconds left. So far, looks like TSM's going to be roaming pretty heavily upstairs. That is evident by their reinforcements, their gadget placement. Overall, you've got a good setup from Nip in terms of the soft destruction. I'm curious how many breaching charges they've brought. It looks like they got one set there on Psycho. So it's imperative that Pino or Psycho, one of them stays alive after the top four clear comes out, so Nip can use those breaches and Skeleton Key to open up above the bomb site, forcing the TSM players to play a little bit less safe. Though we have seen that not be too much of an issue for teams in the past. Many teams at this land especially actually have been proving themselves to excel at dealing with that vertical pressure by just playing in safe spots off-site and retaking later in the round. TSM is a team I would describe as being uh, if efficient at that exact strategy. It's the room downstairs here. Final attempt for TSM to continue to keep the hold that they have on this matchup. But they'll lose it, or at least lose one right away. And while they have the advantage in the map, they won't in terms of numbers. That'll be ninjas in pajamas. The Psycho gives up very little to punish Merc inside of what appeared to be the humidor. Merc, again, has been getting picked off early in this map. It's, I think he's probably in a place right now where he's just really frustrated with how frequently he's getting picked for nothing. And it's a bad feeling. It's a bad place to be. He's probably not very comfortable. Again, if you're a TSM fan, you can only hope that that changes in the second half. Achieved, though, is in the opposite place. He is in the happy zone, and he is going to pick off Psycho, who has also been getting picked pretty early. 11 kills so far for Achieved, as he's been on a primarily fragging role, and his initiatives have been doing great work for TSM, and honestly giving them so much time and space. Whether it was the Legion being able to slow people down and alert himself and his teammates to the advance from the attackers, or now Mozzie being able to use those pests to deny information and also gain some very critical information. There's Bolo giving up nothing as he drops now. We'd seen Psycho give up nothing in that very first altercation, and now there's one for TSM. But what this has done for Nip is, as every member of Nip is still upstairs, the C4 dealing almost fatal damage to Pino, is that they're now going to need to translate this to the floor down below. If Pino had been killed by that, oh no! A huge miscalculation from Muzi. Luckily for Nip, the gas canister will not extend onto the buck if Pino gets picked up. If the buck had been killed, then this would be a lot easier for TSM to hold out in the last 30 seconds. And you said it best, 30 seconds. Not a ton of time, though there now is a great rotate that is going to be held by this buck. Pino is just so low that he is in trouble. A drop from the Thermite, a pre-fire works out as Geo had taken Muzi down just seconds before. Still, this Thermite in good position to capitalize. Not better than Geo. that's two kills now, as the SMG-11 is just a simply superior gun at that range. Pino won't be able to accomplish much. It's another kill for Achieved. He's just stat padding at this point, and make it three for him. A 5-1 scoreline through that first half. Obviously, you can be as proud as you want of your performance, and TSM have a lot to be proud of there. No timeouts taken just yet. We'll switch sides and see if TSM's momentum holds. Bagel is happy. You can see it on his face. That's the coach behind TSM. He is just so excited for his squad to keep this momentum going. As you said, that's the question, though, on that half swap, because defense is the favored side for Cafe. That's important to note. You mentioned it in map number one, Parker, and I agree with you. I think we can all agree on this one. Tactical timeout for Nip. Perfect timing. Um, Ninjas of Badamas are an emotional team. They've proven that multiple times over multiple lands. They rely a lot on that momentum. And when things start to go awry, as they have thus far through this map, Nip can struggle. They can start to make really basic mistakes, like ashing your teammate who's on low HP, 
like flashing your teammate who's trying to clear and capitalize on a player in cocktail. Like Bolo, Bolo shouldn't have gotten away in that last round. No. Muzi flashed Kamikaze who was peeking Bolo. And I'm no actually no, to be fair, at that point Bolo was gone. But then why isn't Muzi peeking him in the first place? You gotta punish. You gotta keep that momentum. You gotta and if you're not gonna get that win that fight, then maybe your teammate will follow up and win it too. You gotta have you know faith, trust in your teammates. There's a lot of missteps being made from Nip right now, and I think it's partially down to them rushing themselves and then also hesitating way too much. As weird as that sounds to have both of those things going on, it's, it's definitely coming out here for Nip, and I hope for Nip's sake that they're going to be able to balance that out thanks to the timeout that was just called by Bob. Psycho taking the active leadership role on that team, speaking to them and trying to keep their heads in the game. Now, if you just looked at the demeanor after that very first map, which was TSM's map choice, there was still some confidence, and I would say hope, in the, in the heads of Nip. They didn't look too devastated knowing how close they had come to being able to knock uh, TSM off of their map choice, but now things are obviously a very different story and that's where the tension on the team begins to affect your play and, and how you are effectively working as a unit. Ninjas in Pajamas on Rome are a very frightening team. On a map like Cafe, especially with the lineup they have, they are going to be able to hold tight if they want to sit close to the site and not need to roam that much. So a major advantage they might actually decide to forego as this castle setup that we see is going to essentially section off piano and keep somebody playing very safely, knowing that all three castle barricades are used on the two windows and then one on the double doors. It actually looked like the Echo of Music was going to be positioned in the corner that is referred to as pixel spot or bench. And if he just sits there, he can commandeer the two yokai drones and, and be quite safe. He's only exposed to a push from that white hallway or top of white stairs, and you can bet your bottom dollar that there will be somebody at some point watching that, either be it through a cam that could be set up where there are Valkyrie on the board. There isn't. There could be a deployable cam, yokai. one of those bulletproof cams. There's also a yokai that is positioned there, so that's exactly what they'll be looking at. Really good control there of the information for Ninjas in Pajamas. TSM right now, gonna have to deal with that. Merc's gonna have a tall task. He needs to get the Yokai drones. He needs to get the ADSs. Big job ahead. Slow going on the take for TSM. We've, we've talked about this though before. Uh, TSM have been pretty slow on their uh, attack half. It's actually worked out pretty well on Consulate. I don't know how well it will work on Cafe. Castle Barricade goes. Ash charge out. That's two of them now eliminated. Muzi extends himself from Pixel all the way over to Sofa. This is very dangerous. Very dangerous. But he knows he needs to take risks in order to establish advantage, and he'll do just that as a Chief goes down. Holding an angle onto the other rappel, he actually narrowly is missing out on it, and he gets it! Beautiful gunplay from Muzi. Is he gonna get the third on the third rappelling player? The tracers suggest location to Muzi. He could easily kill out Merc. But he's going to lose the fight finally of Pojo, and Geo gets Pino. So now TSM's in a three-on-three. Three. TSM miraculously, continuously come back from early disadvantages. It's very, strange. very, very, very well played, though, in order to keep the, the time on the side of his team and to take out two very important operators. You know, that soft destruction is gone. Frag grenades, gone. The, the, just the fact that it's achieved in Bolo, both of whom have been on a tear so far in this matchup. And now another might go down as the Nomad just sits and waits. Easy frag for Kamikaze. Psycho goes, traded off though, and somehow managed TSM are, are looking very close to being able to push to match point. It's just the UMP in the hands of Julio now. What's working for him is that a single bullet to Merc will take him out. Drone from Pojo to try and figure out the castle's location. It gets spotted. Now Merc has the intel as it's a very quick run from Julio over towards Lumber. He'll sit by the rotate inside a back bar store, but a split push from TSM will mean that Julio's target prioritization will have to be good. A default plant from the Thermite. Is it being watched? Julio can hear this through the wall. He runs up. He sees the planter. Takes him out. What a beautiful shot on him both Merc and Pojo. That's a confidence booster for Nip. It would have been match point for TSM if he hadn't have made those shots, but he makes them, even though the timer would have had the round for Nip.
Julio, the man on the far right at the end of the desk. A beautiful play by the man with the OK tat. Now, 5-2 still favor TSM, but that's a big win for Nip. They are so much closer now to bringing this to, a, well, I guess, map number three. But it's still a tall task. We've seen it done before, though. It's not unbelievable to uh, assume that Nip will bring this back. Now, top floor defense didn't look great for Nip. Luckily for them, Defenders since they won it, they aren't going to have to go back there. The biggest thing, or at least not for a while, the biggest thing is that uh, Muzi was able to get those two kills early on. And I got to say, if he hadn't done that in uh, Piano, I, I don't think that Nip would have been able to... No, no chance they win that round. Also, Julio is a clutch player. He wins those. Um, he had that big moment with the low HP enemy, the IQ that was Merc, I believe. Also a large advantage in that one-on-one -on -one at the end, but mainly the positioning there for Julio was 10 out of 10. The initial kills for Muzi, exactly what Nip needed. The clear in from TSM not fully covering all different spots. Now, it's going to reading instead of kitchen. Normally you would see kitchen be a more prevalent bomb site, but I think that normal is actually the kryptonite to a lot of teams at a land like this, you often see major adjustments brought out for an invitational. This is, at every invitational, we see more meta shift than anywhere else at any other time. Because every team is trying to play in a way that they're trying to catch other teams off guard. That's it. And so, I mean, it's nothing crazy. And it's actually, this is a something we see even in Pro League, where you'll go to reading over kitchen. Because it, some teams just prefer it. Simple as. It's the same uh, for many different maps, where you see those primary bomb sites, they get shuffled around, they rotate. Bolo with the first kill of the round. TSM, sandwich man advantage. All he did there was walk into Cigar and peek into Cocktail. There was a player waiting for him to die. Just Bolo things. Just Bolo things. Psycho though, doing Psycho things and getting Tojo. This aggressive Echo play has been fascinating to watch. I mean, oh. this time it's Psycho, though. It's not Muzi that's going to be doing it. It's the same exact thing that Bolo did, by the way. That was just... Now, and it was in the opposite way. It was Cocktail peeking to Cigar and Cigar peeking to po uh, Cocktail. And now we've got uh, even 4-4. Well, I mean, the bigger loss is the Maverick than I would say the Dock. I'm not too chuffed if it's the Dock that's getting taken down in comparison to that Maverick. So, you know, it's a strong angle to be held from the attackers as they can watch that box and now another for Bolo comes out. TSM have been very good on this entry so far in this particular round, though they're going to about to come up to some significant resistance. Frag grenade sails, shotgun does some damage, flashed off. Down goes the smoke, so only good enough for one. The Buck doing some damage on to the Mute. Excellent play from Achieved, and Geo is there as well. Very oddly paced round, but that's it. That's match point, map point, series point between these two teams. I don't- They, they haven't won yet. I don't know why the- They haven't won yet, next round. Close. Close, but uh, a little, little quick on the trigger there. Yeah, just a little. I mean, it was triumphant. That round was. That was <laughs> it was definitely a big round. Yeah. Shh. You're not supposed to leak the results of the script ahead of time. Guys, we talked about this. We, we know. We know that it's all been planned out, but you can't. You can't do that. Everybody is going to know now. <sighs> well, you know, it's out there now, Parker. It's out there now. Everything's a simulation. We are living mm -hmm. in a simulation. Absolutely. It's like We're being used it, as batteries. I mean, they they know, and you know who they are. They they know that this is all this is all just for show. So, Ninja to pajamas, the way that they held that um, was actually pretty cool. I like the way that they were setting up a cocktail. There was a heavy investment upstairs. They did not shy away from the fights. There was a big moment there though, uh, where I believe it was Muzi fell out of Cocktail when Kamikaze was still above. Could be mistaken about the exact players, but there were two players playing Cocktail at the end there. One fell back, the other one died. No refracts coming out from Nip. TSM know they have full control. Achieved as Buck is peeking into the site, and he's like, oh, well, there's a kill. 
that was pretty much that was the end of the round right there. It was the moment where Nip gave up on those refrags, gave up on the top floor, and tried to just walk away with what they had left. You can't walk away with what you have left. You need to either maintain adva advantage, establish advantage, or not lose anything in that situation. And, well, Nip lost something, they walked away. It was the wrong call. TSM secured the round off of it. Now, it's going to be match point because of that. Nip now have to go flawless for four rounds. It's very, very difficult to do in Siege, even on the defensive side of Cafe. This is so challenging for Nip. They've already taken their timeout. It immediately resulted in a round victory, but not Defender much else. A run out from Psycho, not detected, as it comes very close to just being a little bit over. And any Valkyrie cameras that are outside will now be hunted down by Bolo. And there he goes. It's such Came a just to get it. We've seen that at least four or five times this land. I feel like we saw it. He, what was it, two days ago, and we talked about it. Opening pick to Bolo, though. Down goes Pino. That was actually Merc on the IQ, not Bolo. I'm so used to Bolo playing on IQ. I wasn't even, I, you know, I wasn't Can even looking. Yeah, uh, Bolo's been this playing isn't, This isn't how the script was written. Yeah, Bolo, Bolo's taking it into his own hands. He is, he's the one, and he's freeing us from, I don't know, the simulation. Bolo has picked up the entry frag here, but he's been doing that consistently as Ash through a lot of these rounds. And he was a big part of the reason that TSM managed to win the last round. Excellent day from Pojo Man statistically, and Bolo obviously being as consistent as we'd expect with Achieved having a very good game here. Merc obviously coming close to top fragging with Bolo on the previous map, if not outright top fragging. So this push still happening over towards Cocktail. The frag grenade goes in. Bolo misses a double from Julio from below. All right. That's an explosive end to both of their rounds. And with it, too, the advantage goes back in favor of Nip. Though the shotgun from Kamikaze, unreliable, does a bit of damage to Merc, but not anywhere near enough. Back to 3v3. Oh. The advantage swings in favor of TSM as Musi falls with Geo down below. He's only a hair away from now confronting the mute of Julio. How does this keep happening? TSM continuously at the disadvantage, and then they somehow manage to bring the round back into their favor. Truly impressive. And now you can see TSM's just going to drone. No rush. 30 seconds to find two. That's doable. They'll see if they can find one. But Julio has managed to go under. No, wait. He's just been detected. And now he's basically trapped in this corner. There's no way for the Mute to be able to go out, but it was Pojo Man that was watching it. Sounds of the Nomad going. If he has not been detected, oh. this could be a major <gasps> blessing in disguise. A third kill from Julio. His C4 was good enough. He'll lie prone, and immediately TSM will have to go for the plant. A 1v1 is provoked, but Julio just needs to sit there and wait. Will this be a clutch moment? No, it won't. Nip will just sit on the ground. Merc could have pushed on up, but too much hesitation from the rookie player, and it ends up being Nip's blessing. Okay, so first of all, I'm sure you all probably saw that drone out the entirety of pillars. You check. Mm -hmm. There might be somebody playing there where Julio was. Check. Nobody did on TSM. They had two, maybe three people. I know two, possibly three droning out there. Trying to find a player in Pillars, and nobody on TSM did, but they didn't actually thoroughly check all of that uh, room. Now, they also lost two people to Julio after the push. Defenders Merc knew where Julio was. Yeah. Why did he stop moving? What possible reason does he have to slow down there? I assume, this is my playing the devil's advocate here for Merc. I, I assume that he wanted to vault onto the t onto the table, couldn't vault onto the table for some reason, and the reason he wanted to do that was to make sure he didn't die to a single shotgun blast. That is, that is the the best I could come up with. I mean, at that point, you kind of have to go for it, right? Like you you know that the shotgun's gonna swing onto you, but you have to at some point push it because there's only a second or two left. You don't have the luxury of time at all. That was a round that TSM very much let slip through their fingers. And yeah. it's still a massive lead for TSM and one that seems unthinkable that they would be able to throw away, but there is a lot left to go, especially with the fact that this is defense for Nip. There were five defensive victories for TSM versus one loss. You're gonna need the same out of Nip. 
They've already got two. They've looked okay, but that reading round was not particularly close. Now, I would be worried if I was Nip still, and there's nothing to stop this momentum. There's nothing to, to settle yourselves because there are no timeouts remaining for ninjas in pajamas. TSM still looking in stride, too. Despite losing that last round. Now, the setup here for Nip has actually worked fairly well for them, mainly due to uh, Muzi's efforts. Nip are doubling down on it. Well, really tripling if they've got a player in Cigar as well. I'm curious to see how TSM's going to address this. They might just try to go for a take somewhere else on the site. I mean, Julio's the only one holding on the east side right now over by Cocktail. But nope, Psycho holding the angle there on the upside down repel. Here come the flashes. Clearing out the ADS, and ooh, bad timing for Psycho to get away from that angle. He actually could have gotten the kill. There's the ADS cleared, and so the castle barricade will open up. That's effective use of the lifeline from Bolo. Muzi trying to get aggressive again on the repel. He does this a lot. Plays with his fire, but he usually wins it. And this a second time. Really unfortunate timing there for Psycho. And this time he just misses the shots. If Psycho had killed Bolo on this repel, we'd be looking at an extension of the streak here for Nip. Well, I mean, a starting of the streak, really. Is that a C4? Again. Is that a C4 that I heard almost get prepped? But no, How? Board. I don't know what I'm hearing. It might have been actually from Pino as it went off. Bolo opening frag. He'll start things looking to give his team enough of an angle to be able to take the rest of the round. Musi is not really in any significant trouble, though if he loses the deployable shield, that's when things will go from bad to worse. Just one stun goes off. Frag grenade shrugged off by Kamikaze. And there's the duel to the death inside a cigar shop. Down goes Kamikaze. He will need to be retrieved. But right now, there's really nothing from this Echo. A single member on repel, as it's a kill for him. It goes to Merc. Kamikaze finished off as well by TSM. Still an advantage for the North American team, as they are sitting on match point. 30 seconds left, and that repel line is giving away the position of one member. That knowledge is significant power for Nip oh. Attackers a drone seems to go by Pino. I don't believe the mute has been spotted at all. A second from Musi, but a run in from Bolo. Pino shuts him down. Another with the SMG 11, but not enough ammunition. The shotgun will be good. Gio will come to the rescue. Again, it's Julio in a 1v2. Are we about to see Deja Vu? Achieved is downed. Five seconds left. Gio will need to find the last member of Ninjas in Pajamas. He has the marks! And Gio clutches it! TSM by the skin of their teeth! They'll go on. They'll join their North American cohorts, Dark Zero. But for Ninjas in Pajamas, to the lower bracket, you go. It wasn't as close as we'd expected. A 2-0 for TSM. And that'll be it for our second match of the day. Very intense rounds there. Ninjas in Pajamas clearly didn't want to let that one slip through their fingers, but it did. TSM proved to be, at least for now, the better team. There's still a second chance for Ninjas in Pajamas as they go to the loser bracket, but a strong advantage acquired for TSM. This is a squad that came in sitting atop the standings in North America. They have not been bested in a best of three in how long other than against Space Station. This is a team that is just continuously getting better. I don't count USN because they weren't playing with Pojo Man. It was just Timzy. Yep. So you can't really look at that as an actual TSM loss. The team managed to figure things out on best of ones, and they come in as being, among a lot of people, the favorite to win the entire event. They took out the number one one team in Europe heading in, Rogue, and now they take out the number one team in Latin America as well. They are proving to be as good as everybody suggested they would be. But the analysts have a rundown of what we just saw over those two maps. Yes, indeed, Intero Kickstart. Thank you so much for that cast. Yes, TSM have made it through NIP fought very hard on map one, but it seemed like they ran out of juice coming into cafe what was happening there alex because even some of the gunfights that we were seeing tsm were just on it and bolo had pretty impressive rounds to say the least i mean losing that first map it's got to be really hot going into second you were that close and you can't help but sitting there thinking if i just change this one thing if i did this instead maybe we would have had that one round and then, then you look at tsm they were calm through everything even the rounds where it looked extremely grim on their end comms were chill they they looked at each other and went, we need this, we need this. Then they lose the round, they're like, okay, fine, next next round. Yeah. Th th there never seemed to be any any inkling that they might actually lose the whole game. It, it never crossed their mind. 
And it seemed like the way that TSM are playing this is not only off of information, but they're trusting one another's decision-making process so much. We were even talking with their player manager, basically. And he's like, yeah, I have never really seen anyone be so comfortable, any team at total, just sitting back, solving any problems that they have by just talking it out. This is a squad that definitely shows up when it comes to their communication. And it seems like maybe this is an ace event to take. I mean, for now, between TSM and Dark Zero, North America are performing fantastically, even though, a reminder for everybody at home, both NIP RB and BDS are not out of the tournament yet. We have a lower bracket. Both of them will be fighting down there to see if they can make it to the Grand Finals. That said, what was happening on Cafe Dostoevsky? Because losing 7-3 in that fashion is just not what's supposed to happen with Nemjas. Yeah, absolutely. And I do want to do a massive shout out for TSM. I think uh, we always used to criticize NA for having really bad drone economy. You know, not utilizing drones the way that, you know, Siege is meant to. And and I come into here and I'm watching Pojaman literally hot drone every single attacking round that they had, giving precise call outs, and they were turning those into kills. And that's, it's it's Siege at the highest level. It really is. And, and yeah, Pojaman just really, stood out to me as a really standout player. Was it, you had the, the anecdote of like, Pojo Man literally takes 20 steps the entire round in total, and the rest of it, he just spends it on drones, right? Absolutely. And if you've got a support player who goes, mm, I guess 80% of my time's on a drone, 20%'s even walking around the map or doing anything, if that is their specialty, which a support player should be doing, then all props to him. He's a great support player. And what's the important thing about that? You're not prioritizing flashy kills. It's not about the clout of being posted as the highlight play of the game. It's about making sure that you're supporting your players to get the W at the end of the day. Anything else does not matter, and TSM shoring it up. Yeah, you gotta give them a lot of credit for not being afraid of failing their push. Yeah, that's and true. A lot of teams struggle where they'll they'll throw three people in and, and there'll be a little bit of doubt. Your first guy will think, ah, maybe this isn't the best play, and then you, you stutter for two seconds, right, and you, you get C4. We've seen this before quite, yes. a, quite a lot with these three-man rushes. But it's... The, the Goyo ban was, was kind of fun. We heard them say, Damn, they're, they're playing this Brazilian shield meta, let's get him out. So uh, that that seemingly helped quite a lot. We were talking about it here. It's like, okay, what are they going to ban? Because we thought the Thatcher, the Mira, that NIP usually ban, right? But the Goyo really stood out. Because uh, was it you, just talking about removing Nitro Cell off the play? Or was it you, Alex? W one of you was mentioning the Nitro Cell specifically. I'm like, yeah, you remove the Goyo. That's Nitro Cell out. Three shields out. TCSG or Vector, which are both incredible guns to use specifically on Cafe Dostoevsky because around corners, the Vector will shred people and at range, the TCSG will do the same as well. Yeah. So it's a lot of utility and firepower that gets taken away from a team that kind of was relying on it if you look at the scoreline because they ran so many shields specifically in Cocktail. How many times do we talk about reading, right? Having that defense on that top floor in Cocktail, shield after shield after shield, three layers with Goyo. That's really difficult to deal with. And it's got to be awkward coming in with Buck and then all the holes are there for you already. Exactly. We, we saw that at two, a few times, right? Who was it? Merc? Merc achieved, I believe, it, it, one round on Buck as well. They were attacking yeah. downstairs achieved, yeah. and it just peeked around the hole that was pre-opened to support the defenders that are playing inside of Cocktail and just yeah. got the kill in the smoke that end, ended the whole round. Do that, And I think that's the risk you take as, a, as a, a defensive side is that you go, we need these vertical holes to be able to hold and we take that risk. And if we get overtaken above, then unfortunately we, we accept that those vertical holes we made now are used against us. But I do want to give a huge shout out to Achieved as well. He had a really bad, I guess, first map and, and for, for several reasons. And then he comes in and redeems himself this map, I think it shows that the caliber of the players on TSM is spread very wide. Now, NIP drop to the loser's bracket now, and they're trying to fight their way out of it. What do they need to be learning from this matchup, specifically on these two maps, to try and close things out? I don't think they should be too hard on this, themselves after this. Like, mm. it, it wasn't like they played terrible. They played against a really good team where they... I mean, there was mistakes from both teams. There really were. But we also saw a lot of good stuff come from them. Mm. So. Keep the mindset up, you know, like get back to the drawing board, maybe readjust. You have quite a lot of odd material now where you can look at some of the mistakes you made on some of your pushes. Yeah, absolutely. I would like to see them rely less on Muzi. 
Um, I don't think having one star player is the way to go about it. And I think a lot of people thought TSM would be the same way when they first formed. And I, I sort of said, no, there's a lot of star players there. And any of them could show up just as we saw Achieve yep. do last map. I think relying on one or two players consistently to show up all the time is very demanding and something that I hope the rest of the players sort of just gather up together and rise up. All right, well, let's take a look at the bracket. Everybody watching from home, here's where we stand at the end of match number two for the state. It's two more to go as well, so talk through those in just a second. Pull up the bracket, let's talk about it. Remember the schedule, we talked about it before. Two games coming up, G2 versus Fnatic. That's our next game, Space Station versus MIPR, last one for the day. TSM were able to beat out against NIP. They're in the upper bracket semi-final. And then the second one as well. That's Dark Zero awaiting the winner of Space Station MIBR. NIP and BDS are split. And then we'll see how things funnel in from that side of the lower bracket. Reminder, you're in lower bracket, you can still survive. But only six out of these eight teams will be able to make it through. And once you're in those top four, once you've won your game for today, you're way more comfortable to say the least because you know at least you're not going to get eliminated by tomorrow absolutely and i think with this whole double elimination option for the teams that they're able to turn around and go hang on all right we stuffed up you said before they've got the vods to look back on mm -hmm. that's a huge huge area for teams to go back and coaches to sit there and go hey boys this is our problem this is what we can't do against these kind of teams teams that run this or that and something that's not previously available to them now they have in their arsenal i think that's a very important point I mean, just getting to fix your mistakes. Yeah. Just that one extra chance of maybe you had an off day. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a bad excuse. It was an off day. We, you know, whatever it is. But you get one more chance. At that point, there's no more. The better team won. Exactly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all your information. That's uh, all it for all three of us here for today. But we're not done just yet. G2 Fanatic is coming up after the break with my good friend Veli coming in to host the desk with Emzo and Dev Marta that'll be coming in. So it's Dev Dev Duo plus Veli. I'm very excited for it. First time here in that sort of desk style with two rotations. Pretty excited. And then there's G2 Fanatic. So everybody from EU and APAC, I hope you're ready for our next matchup. We'll see you after the